All the second stage tanks now pressurized. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is Honey Badger Radio. Radio with Buddy. I'll tell you what. You want to find me? Well, you just look over your shoulder, because from now on, I'm going to be right behind you. Oh, you're a nut. HBR Talk with Hannah Wallen. Veterans of the men's rights movement are familiar with a particular type of tribalistic finger-pointing wherein Western non-feminists call Eastern or Middle Eastern cultures examples of real rape cultures or real patriarchies, not like our nice Western culture, which is obviously much more egalitarian. I've heard this described previously as that rape culture over there or those rapists over there. For the most part, the men's rights movement has grown out of that, but there's one group of men we still have a hard time not stereotyping in this way. Male feminists. In this video, I'm going to address some reasons why that stereotype is not entirely deserved, and some reasons why it's not entirely undeserved. But ultimately, just as with every other culture, we should be wary of wrongly accusing through overgeneralization. First, I should probably point out that this perception of feminist men isn't unique to anti-feminists and the men's rights movement. Feminists and non-feminists who aren't otherwise involved with us feel that way too. Virginia Ironside wrote about feminist men as sniveling attention seekers who just assume women agree with their ideology. Everyday Feminism published an article detailing 10 types of male feminists to be aware of with text under each subheading describing different ways in which feminist men can be absolute creeps. Kat Stoffel of the Cut asked men not to call themselves feminists in a post all about how creepy and predatory male feminists apparently are. Shane Peabody Powell of Leo Weekly wrote a disjointed and incoherent rant in which he threatened to beat up male feminists because their little Hugo Schweizer is showing. Seriously. The stereotype itself isn't entirely unearned. There has been a bit of a history of feminist men's reputations going down in flames following rumors, accusations, or admissions of predatory sexual misconduct. In his video, Beware Male Feminists, Hashtag Me Too, Sargon of Akkad noted that the phenomenon of the predatory or violent male feminist has been discussed by feminists and non-feminists for years. In the video, he showed multiple examples of such complaints by women and feminists, along with a big list of examples of well-known or prominent male feminists who have lived down to this reputation, some just by being accused, others by their own admission, and some by conviction. The details ranged from harassment to sexual violence and even crimes against children. When they're all put together, it paints a pretty disturbing picture of feminist men. We noted previously in HBR Talk 76, How to Train Your Demon, Toxicity of Feminist Masculinities Narratives, that feminist narratives are not healthy for boys' development into men. Raise your sons in an environment full of ugly, openly disdained representations of masculinity, and what kind of men are they going to learn to be? What will they become when they're given a choice between acting aggressively in the name of feminism or being condemned as aggressors against women? Where is their option for non-aggression? On top of this, feminism provides a strict, moralistic rule set that creates a social order around a sin concept, privilege, and a saint concept, the victim narrative. In the name of this morality, feminists can freely bully others, just as long as they do so in the name of enforcing feminist dogma. These rules can be twisted by bullies within the movement to suit their interests whenever they want to socially dominate another person. A good example of this is body positivity feminists insisting that men who don't want to have sex with overweight women can be condemned for their personal preferences because fat shaming is bad. 
The ability to redefine another person's autonomy, preferences, and boundaries as prejudices that violate feminism's rules is a handy weapon for predators. Another issue? False piety creates the perfect camouflage for them. Quote, good people who are trusted within a community can get away with boundary infringements that would ordinarily be red flags if committed by anyone else. A dogma-promoting feminist who has established a position of respect and trust can expect, at least for a time, that his peers will excuse reports of any untoward behavior of his with certainty that he didn't mean it that way, possibly even by turning the accusation around on the accuser. When the symptoms of the predator's real nature become too numerous or obvious to ignore, those same defenders will deny their involvement, claiming they had no idea such a monster was in their midst. Then there's the fact that feminists are taught that goodness is achieved by following the rules, and breaking the rules is always bad. But women are wonderful, so women aren't nearly as likely to be criticized for breaking the rules as men are. Every time the rules change, that creates a potential for an accusation that is basically a result of entrapment. The accused is then presumed toxic or malicious, even if, at the time of the behavior in question, he was following the rules of the day. Finally, non-feminist women make good targets. Feminist othering of us, complete with labels like pick-me and bootlicker and gender traitor, identifies us as enemy operatives. It's not misogynistic to attack someone who has been identified as an enemy by feminist women or by interpreting feminist dogma. It's feminist. Some men will do what they think gets them female approval, and if that involves acting aggressively toward non-feminist women, they'll do that too, even if it's going to get them arrested for assault. Some men will use that condition as a cover for aggression that would otherwise be unacceptable, the same way some white knights are using gynocentric ideology as a cover for their aggression against other men. Again, false piety creates the perfect camouflage for predators. So, of course, it makes perfect sense that feminism would be lousy with predatory men, right? Well, not so fast. Yes, there have been many outspoken male feminists who have been convicted of predatory or violent behaviors. There's no denying that, and it is a problem. But that is only part of the picture. Another part is the contribution made by another rule of feminism. Believe women! A lot of young men adopt the feminist label without realizing what it really is. They support equal rights for both sexes and have bought into the myth that women are uniquely oppressed in society. They may have a traditional sense of responsibility for women and girls, and they may be latching onto this ideology thinking it's a battle cry for defending and elevating the people they love. They are unaware that they're looking at an illusion, that the nice face feminism presents to the world is a false one. Behind that mask, feminism is a complex female victim narrative based on a conspiracy theory that again blames all of the ills in the world on the male sex, all as a means to gain and maintain political power. Narratives like patriarchy theory, rape culture, and toxic masculinity prime feminist women to feel victimized anytime their interests come into conflict with the interest of a man. How likely is that to lead to a greater number of allegations overall? How likely is it that a greater number of feminists than non-feminists might make allegations that turn out to be frivolous or even blatantly false? How equipped are feminist men to deal with this problem? Would they even be able to admit to themselves that they could be the target of a false allegation if the accuser is female and feminist? In addition to imposing narratives on boys and young men that rob them of pathways for developing functional, healthy adult masculinity, feminism takes away their right and ability to properly defend themselves when they are falsely accused. You can't call an allegation false if you're not allowed to imply that the person who made it might be mistaken, or worse, lying. You can't claim to be innocent of a behavior that you've told people is an inherent gender-based characteristic that needs to be trained out of every person of your sex. A fellow's only recourse is to try to deny having malicious intent while recognizing her truth and his own toxic masculinity. 
In the cases of both rightful and wrongful allegations, as I've said before, toxic masculinity caused my bad behavior is the devil made me do it of feminism. So, are feminist men more likely to be creeps, predators, and bullies? Or are they innocent victims caught in an ideological trap and maligned by their mentally damaged female colleagues? Well, both, actually. Clearly, feminism is no guarantee of admirable or trustworthy character in a guy, and if a gal assumes because a guy identifies as a feminist that he is somehow better than other men, she is a fool. That doesn't mean that all guys who are feminists should be presumed guilty of anything, however. They are not those rapists over there. While it's not unfair to poke fun at the feminist movement for its apparent tendency to produce guys with toxic or malicious character traits, it's another thing altogether when dealing with allegations against individual men. When a guy is accused, being a feminist doesn't make him any less deserving of the civil right of due process, or in the court of public opinion, benefit of the doubt, at least until there is evidence to support a conclusion about his allegation. It does mean that when you run into a male feminist who is a bully, you're dealing with someone who is likely to use rules lawyering as one of his primary tools. Finally, that benefit of the doubt shouldn't mean that feminist men's public behavior is invisible either. Being a men's rights activist means giving everyone a fair shake. However, unlike feminism's relation to women, our activism doesn't obligate us to ignore crappy behavior just because it's coming from a man and that includes displays of hypocrisy. It's perfectly fair to hold feminist men to their own ideological standards, even if they are wrong. When engaging with one who turns out to be a bully, don't be afraid to strategically call it like you see it. They ought to be able to handle it after all. Feminist women are always telling them they need to be able to accept responsibility for their toxic masculinity, right? Join HBR Talk as we discuss the stereotype of the male feminist creep, the limits and scope of the stereotype's validity, and its implications. You can tune in Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern via the link in the low bar. Of course, that would be right now and right here. So, here and now we are. And I don't know why the darn Discord box is not showing who all is here. Let's try that again. There we go. Here and now we all are, not just me. So hello and welcome to HBR Talk 118, Those Rapists Over There, The Reputation of Feminist Men. I'm your host, Hannah Wallen, here with She Who Must Be Obeyed, Karen Strawn, and Nonsense Annihilator, Lauren B., to examine the stereotype of the male feminist creep. But first, you know what we gotta do. That's right, I'm here to remind you to head on over to badgerfeed.com and register to receive notifications. We can't make YouTube give us fair treatment, but we can pick up their slack by offering that information to you ourselves. And we can't stop corporate entities from engaging in political discrimination, but we can provide you with an alternative way to support our work. That's why feedthebadger.com is the most stable way to help. So remember, folks, information is power and we have it. So head on over to BadgerFeed and uh, register to receive those notifications and feed the Badger to help us share the news and analysis you come to HBR to hear. This one's going to be a toughie. There's a lot to unpack regarding the issue and a lot to question. Clearly, there are plenty of examples that explain why the creepy or aggressive male feminist stereotype exists but it's also fair to question. Is this really significantly uh, more prevalent among feminist men? Is it gendered or is just uh, on par with the, uh, is it just on par with the uh, behavior of feminist women? Or uh, are we noticing it more because feminist rhetoric portrays feminists as less creepy and less aggressive? Well, nowadays they don't. Feminist rhetoric um, portrays feminist men as super creepy and super, you know, suspect uh, that that they're, you know, that they really, really do have something, you know, icky about them and that, that you really need to be careful about them. Like that 10 types of feminist men you should you should be uh, be aware of. Right. And be wary around. 
Um, I do think that uh, they, they may stand out to us more because of their purported feminism um, that uh, that they uh, they may actually um, just stick out like a sore thumb given you know they're saying one thing and doing the exact opposite uh, as opposed to you know everybody expects conservative men to behave like pigs um, feminist men are supposed to be enlightened and and you know morally righteous and all of that and and uh, and so it, it it kind of, um, I guess it just looks, it looks worse or it has a, it has a, you know, sort of a more of an attention grabbing quality. Um, but I do think that there are some things about feminism that would attract certain types of predatory men. Just like I think there are some aspects of conservatism, particularly sort of the traditional uh, marital lifestyle and things like that that might attract some bad male apples there as well. Um, you know, if if you if you're attracted to a position of authority, uh, you know, where you're the head of household and and the wife is a traditional wife who's supposed to sort of follow your lead, um, that might attract a lot of men who just really, 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 really want to be in charge for its own sake and have things all their own way, right? Just like when you look at politicians, right? Or people who uh, arrive at extreme levels of success, CEOs and things like that, uh, a lot of them get there, who get there, who, who have what it takes to be willing to do the sometimes morally ambiguous things that people sometimes have to do to get to those positions. Uh, that just means that you're gonna see an over-representation of certain types of, I guess, moral deficits among the people who rise to those levels, right? So, I mean, I think I think we got a whole bunch of things going on here. It's, uh, I wish I could say, uh, like I wish I could say about everything, including why does feminism exist and why do so many people believe it or, or you know, why do people hate men's rights activists and why don't they, why do they think we're bad and, you know, and why do we have an empathy gap? I think it's a lot of different things. I, I, I don't think that there's just one one thing going on here. I think there's there's a number of things that are going on. So, Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of men who have been raised, you know, mostly by single mothers. And <clears throat> what's the rule in these households? You, you have to respect your mother no matter what she says or does. The rule is you you do not disrespect your mother. And anyone else who disrespects your mom, it's like it's World War Three or three and a half or whatever number we're on right now. But um, yeah, it's, it's really easy to see how males get sucked into the feminist narrative. Um, but I think it says it says a lot about men's empathy and their desire to protect women when they will so readily just adapt this label without even really knowing what feminism really is. It sounds on the surface like I'm here to help women. And of course, what, what do men do in their chivalrous nature? They step up, they rise up to the plate and say, Yes, I'm here. I, I am a champion of women. I love women. I respect women. Feminism must be the way to go because this lady over here cried and said that she's being oppressed while she tweeted out on her iPhone. And uh, I, I, you know, everyone must drop what they're doing because this, you know, these these ladies feel oppressed um, without ever giving it any kind of real thought. Yeah, they don't, there's no scrutiny. There's no real deep scrutiny on the part of most people. I mean, this is why um, even people who disagree with feminism, most of them, or who just who just think it's kind of a load of hooey or whatever, right? Um, they, I think most of them don't see it as an actual threat, like yeah. as an actually dangerous set of ideas. Um, the same way we don't see a woman as dangerous in the same way that we see a man as potentially dangerous, right? Well, I think um, a lot of people also don't realize the, the extensive lobbying effort that feminists have engaged in in the United States and how much that has influenced every place that uh, English common law is used. And I think they, they don't realize how much law has become gendered 
or has uh, been rewritten to accept gendering its application. Uh, I think and, they actually you know, do. I, well, I think they're they starting actually do, to, but I, but think... I think a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, because there's a lot of people who think that the the Violence Against Women Act is uh, is actually gender neutral. I hear that from people all the How time. How can oh, you think the Violence Against Women Act is gender neutral? <laughs> Believe right? it like, or that's not, the, they do. You know, and no, but I mean, like that that's just them making excuses, right? Because they know the law was put into place to protect women from male abusers. They know it because... That's what they see on Lifetime TV, right? Uh, That's what they, they see they on those They may know that that's Hallmark the stereotype they see on Lifetime TV, but there, seriously, there's a lot of people that think, well, no, it, just because it says Violence Against Women Act doesn't mean a man can't uh, go report his abuse and get help from the police and all this oh, other stuff. Oh, my they really God. Do. Very seriously, a lot of people think that. And they, well, they're I mean, very but, surprised but when they find out that most of this system that is set up to uh, deal with domestic violence treats men as perpetrators even when they report abuse like people are That's... shocked when they find that out and some of them will sit there and just flat out deny it and i'm not just talking well, about I... feminists i'm talking about like your every av everyday average citizen uh and and i think sure. stuff like that when they find stuff like that out there are people who adopt feminism find stuff like that out particularly men uh find stuff like that out and then they're like well this is this is bullshit I'm, I'm out yeah, of here, well, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why the men's rights movement has so many refugees from the feminist movement, is true, that true. those misconceptions. But what, but what I want, what I was trying to say is that I think that, I think that there are a lot of people who, who really believe that, you know, because it's what they've been shown and it's not just what they've been shown, but they've shown, they've been shown the thing that sticks out to them the most, right? Like, like I said, the male feminist who's predatory sticks out like a sore thumb among the feminists, right? Well, you know, there is the, the Egyptian woman in the blue bra really brought it home to a lot of people. You know, you go and you watch that video, you see that woman being beaten by Egyptian police, right? Her burqa falls open, you see her blue bra and, and, Everybody just lost their fucking minds, right? When 10 feet away, and th the police stopped beating her the moment they realized, oh, there's actually a woman under here, right? Because they don't know, right? They don't know whether whether it's like, maybe it's a male protester who's like in disguise, right? Because that's never happened before. Um, but they, uh, they stop beating her as soon as they notice, right? Meanwhile, there are like dozens of guys in the in the scene being beaten by police one no more than 10 feet away getting his face repeatedly stomped by police right as they're picking her up and moving her out of the out of danger this poor guy is still getting his face stomped and even mras came back and said i went and i watched that video the first time i i rewatched it the first time i watched it i didn't even see that guy mm. That's how much that woman getting beaten stuck out to me, right? So we're not just showing people this one-sided narrative of male perpetrators and female victims, but they're already predisposed to really see that shit and not see the opposite, right? So what we're looking at is maybe they just figured, ah, well, maybe it was gender neutral. Maybe they didn't even care. Maybe they never thought about the fact that it might actually be necessary for men to have these services, right? They may not have even thought of it, of, of it. because like I'm looking at the, the interview that I did in, in Ireland on the radio um, in, I think it was in Limerick. And she says, well, why shouldn't rape victims have standing, have legal standing at rape trials? And I'm like, because it puts the entirety of jurisprudence on its head. Right. That because because the prosecutor cannot be the lawyer for the plaint for the complainant. They must be the lawyer for the people like because because giving this complainant standing in the trial. Right. In the entire process, giving them legal standing as a party to the case means that the law now mandates tainting the testimony of the most important witness prior to trial. Like, what, what, how can you even ask me what's wrong with that? Right? And she just, she's just got no clue because you know what? It would help women. Yep. 
Well, and this is one like if you look at um, if you look at the the makeup of feminism, what I've no one of the other things I've noticed is there's a lot of young men who are really really adamant that sort of there there, there doesn't there seems to be a drop off um, from what I've run into in the 30s. I run into a few male feminists in their 30s, but then there there seems to be a lot of older men, and it's like. Um, it, it's like they go to college, they get their gender studies, maybe they're raised in a fairly, like most households have a degree of gynocentrism anyway, but like a, an abnormally more gynocentric household, or even a feminist household. And uh, and then they get out of college and they come across something and they, they get out. Um, but I think a lot of guys that in their adulthood, they live up to traditional expectations. And I'm not just talking about like the neoconservative traditionalism. Those expectations are traditional in our society for men. That you are a protector of women. That you defer to women's interests and women's needs and women's uh, sensibilities. That's comfort, been yeah. yeah, women's comfort. Like that's just been the history of our society. Um, so I think a lot of men, when they see information telling them that women are oppressed. They just accept it until yeah. they, they get something hits them in the face. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, there's a guy back there getting the how can she slap video is another one. Like, yeah. you, it's, it's just so stark. You watch this yeah. video and she doesn't just, you know, give him a little smack on the cheek. She bitch slapped him like just hard as she could. And he turned around and slapped her back. And he didn't, he didn't slap her as hard as she slapped him. At least not in terms of the amount of force he could apply versus what she could apply. And, uh, you know, that that led to him getting attacked by every man in the place. There Nobody was, like was upset guys. at what she yeah. did. But, yeah, he got attacked by a violent mob and had injuries and ended up suing. Now he won his lawsuit, but it still was a, uh, a very serious situation. I mean, that guy could have even been killed. And, yeah, uh, oh yeah, no, and he won his lawsuit, and he also uh, turned himself into quite the hottie, and now he's a, and he's got an acting career, so. Well, that's good. good. On him. Yeah, I am good glad on him. to, I am glad to hear that, uh, but the, the interesting thing to me is, is watching, you know, like, I'm, I'm glad that he was, uh, he was able to actually get something out of it. It's a horrible thing that happened to him. Um, just, just being attacked by one person can be really, really terrifying. But uh, getting attacked by 40 people would just be unbelievably... Like, that would just... I can't even imagine that experience. Um, that that I'd be afraid for my life. Uh, and I'm sure he probably oh, yeah. was. Oh, yeah. Um, it'd be horribly traumatic. But uh, in any case, just people being able to see that and look at it and say, holy shit, that shouldn't, shouldn't be happening. Why aren't they not you know, upset? Especially when they learn that that was actually... Uh, against the rules of the show they were promised you know this will not happen and then she did it and that's why he was asking how can she slap because she wasn't supposed to be able to do that she was supposed to be able to be as rude as humanly possible but uh, she wasn't supposed to be able to slap him and and uh, so not only was it unequal in the response as far as you know well they both did the same thing but doing it got her no criticism at all and doing it got him attacked by 40 men um she wasn't supposed to have done it at all in the first place she was violating a rule when she did it uh and so it's all right for her to violate a rule um but it's not okay for him because he's a man and it's not okay for him to violate that rule because there's a gendered taboo and uh you know we don't have that taboo that go in both ways there is nothing um, that women face that's an equivalent in our society to the taboo oh, no. that don't hit girls taboo. Yeah. Oh no. N not at all. I mean, and and I think I. Had, I mean, like, not even abusing children gets you that kind of instantaneous reaction, like a woman right. abusing children. Well, a man sexes, abusing children, sure. You know, both sexes face the don't abuse children taboo. Yeah, uh, but men get judged but I think, for it more harshly. Well, I think I think you know, like there there isn't that instantaneous. Even whether you're whether you are a a man or a woman, 
and you slap your child in public, you're less likely to be attacked than if you slap a woman, if you slap your wife. Yeah, there are several videos online of, um, you know, sort of social exper experiments where a couple walks down the street, or a fake couple walks down the street, actors, right, and, and they, they uh, portray attacking each other, like, one at a time. And when the woman is abusing the guy, for the most part, it takes a while before anybody even speaks up. And then it's usually a woman, and it's usually a very quiet approach. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? You know, you might not want to do that. Um, yeah. That's that's really not okay, you know. And and that's after a bunch of men and women, you know, go by. Uh, there's one where one of the women that's going by actually cheers. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you go, girl, you know, that kind of thing. And, and yeah. there's others where the men going by cheer or ask yeah. if she needs help. Uh, yeah, she's or abusing join in him. and him. Yeah, yeah. She's abusing him, and they'll ask if she needs help. And I, I've seen one, you know, where, like, they oh, actually yeah. do join yeah. in. But uh, when it's when it's the man, you know, faking, fake abusing the woman, they stop him immediately. Like, he oh, gets yeah. a couple of seconds in, and... Boom! There's a guy right there to protect her. Oh, one. You know, if, if I've seen, there's I've seen more one guys than one on guys, the street, yeah. If there's more guys, guys than one on the three street, three guys from and, yeah. three different directions rushing the guy. Oh yeah, and of yeah. course, like that that uh, how can she slap video? Forty guys rushed in to protect her, and mm -hmm. this is like that kind of instinct drives a, a lot of men to get involved with. Not even with to feminism. protect her though, yeah. right? Because she to wasn't in any, any danger. Yeah. As soon as he hit her back, he started backing away, right? And he wasn't going to do anything else, right? And his hands were his hands were where where people could see him, and he was just like, you know, like he was essentially saying, "She's she was not she is not supposed to touch us." Yeah, right. And uh, like I signed a contract to that effect, right? We're not supposed to be hit. And, uh, like, that's essentially what he was saying with the how can she slap, right? How, how is she allowed to do this, right? So, like, he was not aggressing against her anymore. He was like, oh, holy shit, I hit her. And he was, like, backing away. And they still attacked him. Yep. So they weren't protecting her. They were avenging her. Mm -hmm. Well, Nancy, that's the other thing. And this is something that I've noticed. Um, if you... Uh... If you if you look at some of the behavior of of male feminists, especially male feminist behavior toward other men, particularly non-feminist men and MRA men, sometimes it's pretty obvious that it's an outlet for them for aggression. Yeah, like there yeah. are you know, and it's not all feminist men, obviously, but there are, and and I've seen women behave this way too. There are men and women that get involved in, in stuff like this in order to basically use it as a bludgeon against other people of their sex. Uh, basically in order to uh, be able to in order to be able to uh, uh, engage in engage intersexual in dominance hierarchy. Yeah, engage in relational aggression. I am seeing uh, some interesting information in our chat. Um... Meredith Glassberg says we our super chats are disabled, and uh, oh, Allison, we're no longer showing up in YouTube. We might be shadow banned. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna step back from the mic for a minute, and uh, if you guys want to jump in and and fill in, I'm gonna actually communicate this information to the other Badgers. Oh my God! Well, we we, we know it's coming, right? Like. It, like we say every show, you never know when YouTube's going to come in and start with their fuckery and just start yeeting channels and Good ours may be next, but. <clears throat> well. Okay, let's see. Let me see if I can. Um, what? I don't understand any of this. Different page that does not exist to find this stream. It should be there. I mean, should I be on the videos page. 
Um, or is it on the home page? Because it's not on the home page. It's not there. I don't know where else it will be. I mean, I got the notification. Well, I, I'm just not subscribed yeah, this to this is, channel. This is interesting. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look my. Do you have the link to the YouTube video of it, uh, Lauren? Uh, I do. Yeah, can you um can you just shoot me that link in the in the thingy? In Discord. Smart is unlisted. Our our stream? Apparently. It wasn't before. Well, maybe Allison went in there and started poking around. Who knows? Let me right. uh well, let me see what I can do real quick. But um while I'm working on that um, I'm just going to point out, like, among other things, with respect to male feminists and, and the whole uh, issue of aggression and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, predatory behavior and everything, one of the things that I have pointed out uh, in the video that I think is really significant, so you get a lot of guys that go into feminism with, um, they, they don't necessarily have malicious intent. They're not necessarily overly aggressive guys. They're not necessarily assholes, right? They just are there because they think it's the right thing to do. Maybe they're virtue signaling, and maybe they think it's virtuous to be feminist. Uh, but And they're following rules. But they engage with these women who are part of this ideology that encourages them to feel victimized in situations where they're not victims and make allegations in situations where their target doesn't deserve to be accused. Uh, this is this is another big issue in my book with respect to male feminists. Of course they're going to get accused. So it's one of the reasons why benefit of the doubt and due process is vitally important. So there's something for you to discuss. Well, okay, due process is vitally important. This is one of the things that I, I just, like, I cannot stop talking about it. I, I, am, I am kind of almost starting to regret that I never became a lawyer like my mother wanted me to. <laughs> right? Because this is one of those things that I really, really feel passionately about. Is that, you know, it, we should not have certain areas of the law that because they do affect women or are perceived to affect women as victims more than they affect anybody else that somehow we are willing to just just completely toss you know 500 oh, years wow. of of jurisprudential evolution in the trash in terms of of uh, the rights of defendants right the rights of the individual against the massive power of the state particularly since i mean yes okay um kings had all kinds of power and uh, and we don't have that kind of single powerful individual who is capricious and and often arbitrary and can just once right but we have so much more now at our disposal in terms of tracking people in terms of finding people in terms of monitoring people in terms of uh the the tools that we can use to catch them in the act right um, all of these things, the kinds of leverage that we can put on them when we want to convince them to give us the answers we want or make make the confessions that we want and all of those things, right? We have all of these highly advanced tools at our disposal that no king ever had 500, 800 years ago that we actually need more uh, protections for the individual against the level of, um, I guess, the, the level of effectiveness the state could, if it wanted to, bring to bear against any individual to essentially prove uh, that they committed a crime that, you know, when they didn't, right? So it's like, just imagine how interesting things are going to be uh, in the upcoming age of, deep, of deepfakes. Right of, of really convincing deep fakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something. Yeah, I mean these these are the same type of people. The the, the legislators they don't even understand what a, a dank meme is. <laughs> you know, H how are we then going to explain to them what a deep fake is and make it, you know, clear to them that this is you know something that somebody else is doing maliciously 
and you know i just and that and gonna... that the technology is such that that people are actually capable of manufacturing conversations right mm -hmm. fictitious conversations between people who sound like real people um you know just by using a certain type of technology like we can we can fool human ears at this point right there, there was a, a video um that Cerulius did um and i'm trying to remember which college it was i think it was harvard university um it might have been columbia where a guy was accused of raping this woman and he had video or audio recorded the entire exchange between this him and this woman she was really really drunk and she wanted she wanted to have sex with him and he you know basically was just saying no you're too drunk and she goes what do you think i'm ugly and blah blah blah. and no i think you're gorgeous but you're just really too drunk and i i don't want to do this and he had the entire conversation on audio all recorded him saying basically saying no no i'm not going to do this i'd rather you just stay here and sleep it off you're too drunk you're too drunk and i i don't think that they admitted that recording into the trial that they had for him well they'd, they'd have to they would they would have had to right um just because it's pertinent it, it's it's necessary it's necessary to admit that uh in order for him to have his constitutional right to a fair trial Right, because that that directly pertains to the event and sculptive value, right? Yeah, I mean, I I agree, but I don't think that happened in in his case, and I don't want to speak too much on it because I don't want anyone to accuse me of lying about the situation. Uh oh, you've gone robotic. But, uh, oh, am I here now? Oh, I can hear yes. her. She she's saying basically saying that uh, she doesn't want to go. Uh, get accused of lying, so she's not going to talk about it more, much more. But it yeah, might I be to dig up some more information. Might be that well, you're uh, just, everybody's you going Roboto for you, Karen. <laughs> Am I going oh, Roboto yeah, for be. you? Yeah, it might. Um, no, but um, all you have to do, Lauren, don't say uh, I'm not going to. Just say to the best of my recollection, right? Oh, that's that's oh, all you oh. really have to say. If I'm remembering correctly, these were the basic details. You know. I'd have to double check to make sure I'm getting all of them right, but you know, here's the general gist that I got. Because that's how I get past that whole. I I I don't get called li a liar over stuff like that. Um, I missed so. part of the discussion because I was uh talking about the uh uh situation in the back room. Um, so this is solved. Um, and French Honey Badger sent through a super chat so to sort of prove we can now. Uh, $2 Super Chat says, Video is now listed, just reload. So anybody that uh, has was having trouble viewing it or uh, had wanted to send a Super Chat that couldn't send a Super Chat, now you can. Um, just reload the page and it should be all good. I fixed it. Uh, and uh, I guess we have a new title now. So, But uh, in any case, it's all better now. Um, apparently. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. So, <laughs> French Honey Badger gave us another $5 and said, Allison fucked up the scream and unlisted it. All good. We're not getting shadow banned yet. Um, I figured yeah. that's what happened. <laughs> Allison screwed up? Yeah, yeah, but I think what happened is, so, so the way YouTube is now, we had a way to do things, and, we, and it was set up to do things that way, and it worked, and it was great. And then they came along and created an entire new system for live streaming, and you have to use a different setup and a different page and everything. So if you're in the middle of a live stream now, and you try to create another live stream, you can't create a live stream for a future time because you're live streaming. And... Uh, Huh. So if she was going in and trying to create like maybe an after show or another live stream or something, it messed it would have messed this one up because of the oh changes that YouTube made to the way their platform works. Because that was fine. It didn't do that in the past. We were able to do that in the past, and now oh, we aren't. Right. So sake. yeah, YouTube, so now, YouTube now has she re wants... reduced its if functionality. She... Um, if she wants to set up an after show. Yeah, so sure. then then it turns the stream that's already going yeah. into an unlisted after show with no super chats. 
Well, it starts interfering with... So, like, that's why the titles changed. Um, oh, and it, which is God. fine, because I, I did worry that the title was what got us into trouble. Because it was the, you know, the stereotype yeah. of the uh, yeah. aggressive male feminist and, like, okay, you know, we're, here we are criticizing feminism. But, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised, because that does, like... Oh, oh, um, I, I got alerted to something, by the way, uh, just yesterday, I think it was, on uh, Twitter. Um, you can now report tweets for uh, being untrue about an election or being bad information about an election. So, like, these social media sites are getting more and more um censorious i guess would be the best way to put it they are actually starting to because that that's that's political censorship right there um it, yeah, well, if facebook, you express facebook an opinion said, on, zuckerberg said he wasn't gonna do it but yeah he says he's not gonna do it, it but that doesn't necessarily mean he won't because i've seen him ban uh forums for for men's issues and forums for um parents whose kids have been stolen by by child protective services on the basis of politics and yeah uh, but there's a, it's it's not it's no what what i'm saying is yeah i know uh, they're I, not going to do the I election thing no i don't think that he would just allow any political statement to stand in an advertisement or otherwise on his platform he's but he's not going to police the honesty of political ads is, is essentially what he told congress and he says he's not going to do it because um, because number one, if somebody, a political party is going to lie to you, don't you want to know that, or a candidate is going to lie to you about the other candidate or the other political party? Wouldn't you want to know that That's they're a That's a really liar? good point. It's a yeah. very good point. Um, the other point I would have on this is who gets to decide what's the truth? That was because his a other point. Of, a lot of stuff that's said in political ads is the politician's interpretation of information that is presented factually in the ad and then they'll state their interpretation and i've had people call me a liar on twitter for my interpretation of uh mary Koss's work you know oh, I, yeah. I i point out that mary Koss's work and it's and it's uh designed to inflate female sexual violence statistics and obscure male sexual violence statistics uh, makes it so that we cannot base our our opinions on uh, on the prevalence and scope and gender ratio of of sexual violence perpetration on feminist statistics because we have yeah. this issue of uh, well it's not defined as rape if a woman forces coitus specifically or fellatio specifically on a man so we don't know all of the instances where someone is forced to penetrate if they're being forced into something that is very very much equal in terms of the level of intimacy and the type of attack it is to what uh, happens during forced coitus against a woman what we classically define as rape and forced oral sex on a woman which is also now defined as rape because it is penetrative sometimes. Uh, so you have this situation where how are we supposed to, to uh, categorize that? How are we supposed to quantify that? And I've been called a liar for pointing that out, that this does obscure and it does minimize and marginalize uh, those those male victims and just saying that pisses feminists off enough and I've had feminist men get oh, yeah. mad at me for that uh, and and they'll try to use this is an interesting argument that I've heard made uh, and this is one I, I got from uh, from that God Evolves guy who by the way has been banned um, he, he he banned or just suspended he's been banned they didn't even send it. he he got on an alt account which is also a toss viol violation uh, and admitted that not only did they suspend his account, they didn't send him a message about it, and they weren't responding to him. So he's banned banned. But uh, oh. one of the th arguments that he made to me, I have pointed out that um, it, is, it is predatory and aggressive for feminist to, feminists to define women's sexual experiences as rape 
contrary to women's definition of those experiences. Uh, if a woman says she consents and she consented and, and she wasn't, you know, uh, coerced, she wasn't forced, she's not saying it at gunpoint, uh, and, you know, those kind of things, you know, she's not incompetent in some way to, to make that consent, she's not a child, then she consented. You don't get to tell her that she was raped. You don't get to force that victim narrative on her. And you don't get to force that trauma, that sense of trauma on her, or make her feel guilty for not feeling traumatized. Because that's, that's simply the way it is. And I feel the same way about men who have had sexual experiences that maybe, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily uh, expect them to like. Um, but if they say they have consented, then they've consented and you know and unless there's some some characteristic or situation that that makes it impossible for for their consent to be valid where where they're incompetent do you know mentally incompetent or they're they're talking about something that happened when they were small children that's consent uh it, it is simply that you know that's 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 their choice but I've had feminist men argue to me that because I object to overriding people's consent in order to write their experiences down as rape, uh, that I cannot say that men can be raped if feminist men say it's not rape to do the same thing as to a, to a man as it is to do it to a woman. Because they object what? on behalf of other men oh and therefore God. I'm talking over men. And that's, they equate that with my objection, that it's the same. They have the, the ability oh. to negate oh, other sake. men's refusal because so, I object yeah, so to you, the you, you can right say, to, and, and I couldn't get him to understand that he was doing exactly what he was objecting to. I want to take a specific woman's word for it that she consented, even though she didn't consent the way feminists wanted her to. She says she consented, so... In my opinion, and in hers, she was not raped. Feminists may disagree. However, you think that that means that you can say it's impossible for a woman to rape a man because I'm a man and I'm of that opinion. Is that what, is that what you're getting at? Um, well, no, it's, it's, I don't want to take a particular woman's uh, uh, consent was with his thing. I, he didn't want to have to acknowledge a another woman's consent uh, because feminists wouldn't define it as valid consent oh. and uh and so when i said oh so like if she was totally drunk well or yeah something. or you know drunk but not drunk enough to be incapacitated not drunk enough yeah, to yeah. be unable to appraise her actions just drunk enough yeah. to uh make some bad decisions which you know when a when a woman is drunk enough to make a bad decision and she has sex with a guy. Feminists want to call her a rape victim. When a guy is drunk enough to make a bad, uh, a bad decision, and he has has sex with a woman, feminists want to call him a rapist. So, oh, yeah. I, like, it's no, really it's obviously. Like, but I, I don't. But I his don't, point, think... his claim was, because he wanted to override uh, the consent of the women that Mary Koss defined as rape victims against their. Um, description of their experiences their assessment of their experiences yeah um, he wanted to also say that I couldn't contradict his right to override other men's refusal oh because you know in respect to Mary Koss's uh, uh, use of the word uh, the phrase <laughs> other sexual assault instead of uh, instead of rape you know when well. her research well, you know, honestly, I think as far as, I mean, like, there is a line, in my opinion, right? And it's not even, uh, it's, if you're so incapacitated, you're completely unaware of the nature of what is happening, or you are completely incapable of uh, putting up any resistance. So you're just like, you're too busy puking to be able to utter words you're not aware that anybody's even like in your pants until they're already half done. You know, if you're that drunk, 
Um, I, I don't even think this whole idea of, um, you know, having the capacity to make good judgments or something like that. Um, I, I think that that, that, that's like a, a very ridiculous, like sex is an informal contract, right? It's based on contract. Consent is based on contract, law, but it's an informal contract. It's, it's, it's the reason why when you go and when you do dine and dash, you're not actually committing theft or robbery, you're committing fraud. You entered into a contract. It was a verbal contract, but, the, and it's not explicit, it's implicit, but you went in there ordering food with the implied, the implied part of the contract that applies to you is that you're going to pay for it. Right. That's a contract. Well, right? so I, I would you, disagree on on sex you, and for for a very specific reason. Um, with with respect to food and stuff, that is the the way that that is a contract is that the res the restaurant is open for business. It's set up specifically to sell you stuff. You it's it the intent is anybody that comes in uh, gets service and and it's expected and understood that you're going to come in eat food pay for it blah 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 um the restaurant it's not a, a spontaneous thing where uh you know you go to somebody's house and they're like let's eat you know and you sit down at the table and just start eating together sex is some is is an activity that people engage in they don't they it's not just a uh, planned thing. It's not just a transactional right. it's thing. It's not just yes, a transactional thing, but, but, but it's not I'm just saying... it's not just that it's not just a transactional thing. It is often a very spontaneous thing. Yes. It's a mutually engaged interaction that that is not planned. It isn't con contracted. It is and and part of the the activity of consent is engaging in the act. And I would compare it more to getting into a fist fight than I would to eating at a restaurant where uh, if, if you walk up to a person on the street and you haul off and slug them right in the jaw, um, you don't get to say after you did that that you didn't consent to the fight that happens afterwards. Right. Especially if you keep hitting back during the fight, you don't say, stop hitting me, I didn't want to do this. And, and you don't try to get away from the fight. You just stand there and keep punching the other person. You're going to fight. That's consent. All right. Refusal and consent uh, in, a, in an activity like that don't really equate to contract law. Because contract well, law is the, something is, that you this, actually either it's, it, it's implicit right, this, this in is, that there's the something specifically set up for it. But or I'm, it's not, I'm not talking about in that you write it down and agree to it. I'm not talking about the world that should be and how things should be seen. I'm talking about the world that is. At least in Canada, consent is based on contract law, right? right. That's that. So, can, if that's but, the law, then that's the law. That's, but the thing, the problem the law. with the but, law okay, is but, that but it, what I'm it saying is, fails what I'm to saying consider is human when, behavior. When I go into a store and I ask the guy to give me a pack of cigarettes, and he puts it on the counter and I give him my money, right? If I'm drunk when I do that, I don't, and I take the cigarettes and I go home and I wake up in the morning and I regret it, I don't get to go and charge the guy who sold me the cigarettes with stealing my money and forcing me to smoke. That is true. And it's, it's a fairly because good point. Because even though I was drunk... I was in, I was perfectly capable to enter into an implicit contract, into an agreement. So, is right. what the point I was trying to make. Well, that is a good point with respect to Canadian law, um, but with respect I'm to... Sure, I'm pretty sure American law, in terms of how consent is defined, is also based on contracts. And uh, it... I, it hasn't said anything. I haven't seen anything said about that other than feminists saying that that's the way it should be. Um, but I don't. I don't think it should be, and I, I don't think it belongs at all. Uh, no other interaction like that. Uh, no other mutually engaged um, behavioral interaction like that is treated like con a contract. Um, nobody, for instance, would would consider getting into a fight uh, to be. To have contract law applied to it. Because... Well, sure, but okay. 
but, but it's but, the same. No, 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 no buts on no, that. Look that at the is spontaneous really, thing that happened. That is really exactly the same. The only difference is one of them is an act of violence against another person, and it's and it's returned. The other one is an act of intimacy against another person, and it's returned. Okay, now, but obviously what, in a rape what, situation, what about, it is violence. But what about what about this example, right? That happened to me just the other day. I'm walking out of the store. Some guy says, "Oh, hey, could I buy a few cigarettes off of you?" And or he said, "Could I buy a cigarette off of you?" And I'm like, "He's got coins in his hand." I said, "How much money you got?" And he's, he's like, "I got three bucks." And I'm like, "Oh, three bucks." And 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 he's like, "Yeah, I just need maybe like two. And I count out five cigarettes and I hand them to him and I take the three bucks. And he's like, "Oh, wow, thanks." And I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." And uh, but it's like that was I don't get to come up to him later and say he stole my cigarettes and he doesn't get to come up to me later and say she stole my three dollars even though it was like a spontaneous thing that just happened it took all of like two minutes by mutual agreement right no negotiations really necessary and and like nobody would necessarily consider that we were engaged in a contractual exchange there but we were well you might consider it a contractual exchange that's fine <laughs> But it doesn't necessarily equate to sex, you know. Of course, again, nothing like, equates to sex. Well, that's that's the thing. Uh, there are things that equate to sex. If he came up to you and uh, just held up the money and and signaled because he he didn't speak, couldn't speak, whatever. Um, but you know, made a a gesture, a smoking gesture, and and then held up the money, and you gave him cigarettes, and uh, and he took the cigarettes and gave you the money. Um, that that would still be a form of communication. This it is would one of still the things, be a form of contract. Not necessarily. Yeah. Because you didn't no, say anything. Would. He didn't say anything. No, no, no. You don't have to. It's you don't not have to say... like a contract. No, you... a contract is something that you actually have to have, like some sort of an <laughs> a, 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 an agreement, an understanding, a communication. Right. You can't be held to a contract that is based on physical communication like that Why but not? you can be held uh accountable for for your physical behavior and that's like if you get into a fight you can't cry self defense if you hit first right and you can't cry um i got beaten up and i didn't do anything if you were hitting back and this is one if if you get into a situation where somebody comes up and hits you and you hit back. I I happen to know that in the area where I live, you can get charged for defending yourself in a fight. You can get charged with disorderly conduct for defending yourself in a fight when you are attacked. Um, and you can be attacked well, that's very nice. violently. That's okay. So that this is one of those you're you're accountable for your mutually engaged behavior. Here you're talking about an exchange of merchandise. Uh, sex isn't something that just gets exchanged. It's something that you do together. It's a mutually engaged activity. It's a physical inter interaction and a physical engagement that is equal to in terms of how it works um, with, with the impact on the other person uh, equal to a fight. Not equal in terms of maybe damage done or anything like that, but equal in terms of there's this much physical contact, there's this much intimacy involved. Getting into a fight's a pretty intimate thing. Um, in fact, it can be every bit as intimate as sex. It's just not fun, you know, unless well, unless you're sure, part Irish and then it might be. But uh, <laughs> sure, but <laughs> at least but, in the neighborhood okay. I grew up in. But you know, like okay, here's another example. Say I'm sitting at a table in a restaurant with another person, and I have a bottle of wine. And, uh, and I pour myself a glass and I pour a second glass and I push that second glass, glass towards the person sitting across from me and they take it and they drink it. Um, I can't come at them and say that they drank my wine without any kind of agreement because, you know, like the idea that it has agreement actually that a i think that to... oh, if you wanted to no. make it an equivalent to to uh the feminist narrative on rape it would have to be more the other person saying not being able to say that you forced wine on them against their will 
Um, yeah. So I like, know that was like, if you if you really want to make it it's not them, really... they can drink it or not, but right, but it's like they have the they have the I... ability to consent or refuse. Um, yeah. But this is again, you're talking about a product. <sighs> an external thing that is not a part of you. Oh my goodness, it's it's an action. It's based on an action. It's based on Yeah, it's drinking, based on an action, right? but you still have a subject for your contract. Sure. Yeah. Well, a service is a subject for a contract too. You might get a little bit closer if you talk about um medical services. Say surgery or uh you know, going it not ne not necessarily because as, as soon as you're talking about an external object, that destroys the narrative. As soon as you start talking about an external object, feminists have an answer for that. You know what their answer is? Well, their answer is that whatever happened, she was raped. No, their answer is the inanimate object is not an equivalent to a human being. So, oh yeah, an inan my vagina an inanimate is object not a can't think. Yeah, and the my human vagina being is can. not a car, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, Whatever. that's exact. well, you're not a car. Um, cause you, you equate, you equate, uh, you equate feminism, uh, or rather feminists equate the vehicle. No, when people do that, they, the dunk, drunk driving argument, they equate the vehicle with a man and the feminist with the driver. Uh, and, and immediately <laughs> feminists will, well, you know, men have brains, cars don't have brains, they're responsible for what they do, cars aren't responsible for what they do. So it's, it's not an equivalent. And the contract thing is really not an equivalent either. Um, because again, and you know, you really, you really don't see people in court going, well, they held up money and I held up cigarettes and, and we exchanged and that's a contract. That kind of thing doesn't stand up. That kind of thing isn't litigated. It's it's litigated when somebody has something that they've signed. It's litigated when they have video of something where they can show uh, that there was a discussion, or when they have a sound file that shows that they have a discussion. Um, uh, uh, you know, the the statement by by like legal eagles that uh, a verbal contract isn't worth the paper it's written on. Um, that that doesn't come from nowhere. Yes, but right. much of our day-to-day -day interaction. Are... Uh, you're gonna have to shut your dog up, Karen. I can't hear anything it's you're like saying. I'm sorry. Every every other word was a bork. <laughs> yeah, that's all I heard was bork, 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 yeah. bork. <laughs> the dog but does so... not like what you're saying. But let's 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 make this so... let's make this really clear. Um, when it comes to sexual engagement and, and how the law works versus how the law should work, um, feminist arguments to use contract law come from an intent to negate the, the intent of the, uh, the accused in terms of determination of guilt. They want it to be possible to accuse a guy and get a guy convicted uh, of rape based on him not asking enough and him not requesting enough. They want the contract to have to be verbal, not just action uh, related, and, and they want him to have to ask every step of the way for every t single bit of the engagement. Can I do this? Can I do this? Is this okay? Do you like this? Do you want this? Right. So every couple of seconds in the engagement is that, are we still okay? Is this still okay? Can I still oh, do this? Awful. You know? Yeah. So and, and this, and now this... that's not based on treating women as adults and men as adults that are engaged in a, a mutually uh, interactive behavior, contract or not. It's based on treating women as incapable of communicating a refusal or right. at least and, not responsible for communicating a refusal uh, and, and exactly. with, if you look at it in terms of treating it the same way as getting into a fight it's it becomes an entirely different thing and prior to feminist involvement in the determination of the definition of rape um, it, at least in the United States the standard yeah. was contravention of a refusal. 
the terminology for that was against the victim's will. And feminists demanded that it be changed from against the victim's will to without the victim's consent in order to take the, the presence of intent out of the picture. Yeah, and, and that's something that just really pisses me off about this case. I did, I was able to pull up the article, and it was Columbia University. Um, so basically, just for a quick rundown of what happened, guy and girl go back to the girl's room. She was really, really drunk. She intended to have sex with him. She wanted really forceful sex with him. And um, one of the first things that she said was, you know, are we in my bedroom or, or are we in my apartment? And that's when he started recording. He's got a 30 minute recording of what happened following that. And basically it's, it's just him telling her, no, 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 you're too drunk, you're too drunk. So the very next day, he left her apartment at like two o'clock in the morning. She goes and tells her, I guess her roommate that, yeah, he tried to have sex with me. Um, and then she, I guess she spoke with her boyfriend. Of course she had a boyfriend, right? And he asked, you know, if she, how drunk was she? Well, she hung up, she called him an asshole and hung up on him. Then her very next move was not to call the police, not to seek any kind of medical attention. She went straight to the school and uh, made a, a, a Title IX assault, a sexual assault allegation against him. So Columbia University started to investigate it for about six months. Um, in the hearing, they never asked for any evidence that he might have had um, at all. And he actually, a friend of hers actually had a conversation with him and told him that um, I guess she would use a mix of pills and alcohol to get over a boyfriend. So with all of this information, you know, he goes into, I guess, the court or whatever, the authorities, and they told him that if he even mentioned any of this, that he would be kicked out of the hearing and just go on without him. I, I mean, it's just disgusting. So, yeah, I, I, I remember the case you're talking about. I remember reading about that um, when I was looking for news stories last night. And, uh, that w it, it, they did exclude the video from the college, from the university hearing. That's part of the reason why he's suing, uh, because he was denied his due process rights. And yeah. the Sixth Circuit has ruled on this ki kind of uh, behavior in a campus investigation and tribunal situation. And this university is in big trouble. Um, they oh, they yeah. don't really realize it yet, but court precedent is because they refused to allow him uh, to to present evidence in his own defense he he's got a case against them and they didn't just if i remember right they didn't just kick him out of the hearing they kicked him out of school he's he, well they, he, they he, basically ended his school career well no he he graduated but then they retroactively they re yeah expelled. they retroactively expelled they took his degree though didn't they yes yes they that's, did that's what it was Ooh. So yeah. and, and now they're trying to go after his military records because he he was in uh, I, I think the Marines or something like that. So now yeah the Marines for six years he left with an honorable discharge. Now so they're the trying to trying go... to go after his honorable discharge. Exactly. Exactly. See that becomes what um, the fuck? that becomes harassment in and of itself. And, oh, and yeah. honestly and like he here he is he's actually a victim of sexual assault not rape because mm -hmm. she didn't complete it. But she attempted to coerce him into sex, first to, yeah. to seduce him and then to coerce him into sex. And when he refused, she retaliated against him using the, the easiest method of harassment available to her, a false yeah, allegation. This, this so, system, yep. yeah. So by definition, you know, if he was female and, and a man had tried to, uh, you know, tried to seduce a female, and then when the female refused, tried to coerce her, and then when the coercion didn't work, used harassment that would affect her career prospects and everything, that would be me tooed out the ass. 
Oh yeah, you, know? you remember you remember that so, you remember that one guy one guy who um who uh he he was uh blackout drunk. Yep. Uh some chick took him back to his dorm room. She gave him head, then she texted her her student uh, her resident advisor and said, "Oh, I I totally blew my freaking uh roommate's boyfriend Man, and big uh, mistake." big yeah. mistake yeah i totally wasn't an innocent bystander here right and the first he realized that he'd been victimized was when she reported him for having orally raped her right mm. right and uh and then they wouldn't let him because he was like what the fuck you know like something happened while i was passed out like i want to i want to file a complaint and they were like no you can't that would be yep so feminist yeah. women, you know, we, we we talk about the stereotype of feminist men. There doesn't seem to be an equal stereotype of feminist women, but feminist women are creepy as fuck because they will use these rules, yeah. uh, you know, re regarding sexual assault and, uh, you know, women's agency and their, their idea of consent, what constitutes consent, which only applies one way with respect to the genders. Uh, they'll use those as tools of coercion and and tools of of retaliation when they want sex with a guy and he uh refuses or he he you know when they when they want to take advantage of a guy and then they don't want to feel bad about having having done that you know so oh yeah the uh the um what was his name uh mustafa or or you yar in Canada here, um, and the chick's name was Mandy something, um, but uh, they were uh, grad students in Toronto, and uh, and yeah, she uh, she wanted a last fling. She was having a kind of a he was a, had a long distance girl, long term girlfriend, and uh, and they were having uh, a permitted affair like a fling friends with benefits o open kind of relationship thing while he was uh, separated from his girlfriend uh by, by distance and then his girlfriend was going to move to toronto and so he was like okay mandy like uh we're done um we're not going to do this she wanted one last uh night to convince him that she was really the one he wanted and uh he caved he she talked him into going out he was like ah, i'm not feeling under the weather i don't really want to and she was like come on we'll have sex it'll be super hot blah 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 she was all over him in the bar uh feeling him up under the table and everything everybody saw it and uh she uh, he went she dragged him back to her room and and he gave in and and gave her one last ride and then she accused him of raping her and it went to a criminal trial. Yeah. Now, in this instance, um, I, oh, I don't and, think and it the did, verdict, but... the initial, the initial verdict was guilty. Oh, geez. But but the judge, Judge Zucker, okay, who's now retired. I think that was his last case before he retired. Uh, his judgment was so lean on facts. There were no, there was no finding of fact in his judgment. His judgment read like an Andrea Dworkin book. Mm -hmm. That's right? not surprising. It was, just, it was just nothing but feminist theory about rape. Just just absolutely and and he like so he made no justification for finding uh for conviction based on any of the facts of the case. It was just men rape women so and men are evil and they're bad and they rape women. Uh the end, he's guilty. And so they had a, another judge look at it on appeal, and uh, his his the initial ruling was quashed, and an acquittal was put in. And then Mandy, what's her name, uh, was all upset because she was like, "I just can't go through another two year ordeal because we don't have jump, double jeopardy in Canada, right?" And uh, so, she, like, she had the option. The prosecutor gave her the option of like, "We could try it again. We could try again to convict him." And uh, and she was just like, "I just can't. I can't put it through it all again." It was because she knew she wasn't going to win. Uh, I there's know. only so many times you can get that through. Um, but in in that and in that situation, you're you're still dealing with a you know another feminist woman exploiting the feminist 
narrative on sexual violence as a tool of retribution against a guy. Yeah. And yeah. like this is we hear all the time about how creepy male and creepy male feminists do exist. Like just just for the record, the entire time that I was working on the opening monologue for this show where I was talking about how important it is to give male feminists the benefit of the doubt and how important it is to uh, to respect due process and to not generalize, wrongly generalize people as predatory just because they are from a different ideology or a different culture or whatever. God Evolves, who is now banned on Twitter, uh, God Evolves spent that entire time like exemplifying every freaking uh, stereotype of the male feminist. Oh, yeah. The guy oh, yeah. accused me of, of what was one of the things he did. He accused me of, of wearing a strap on because I hate women. Um, <laughs> like seriously, that was, that was actually one of the things he said to me. Uh, another one that he said to me was uh, in a conversation about adult women and consent in a conversation that didn't have anything to do with children, where the only mention of children was, uh, you know, in response to um, the the statement that, you know, I as as a person who's never experienced it, you don't have the 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 right to speak over uh, women who have experienced sexual violence, and I responded with my history which includes having exper experienced it as a child, he scrolled up to an earlier comment and replied that I was supporting grooming as a right. Oh grooming my. children. So he, he basically oh. uh, attempted to uh, use that to get a rise out of somebody that he knew from other parts of that conversation was a, a victim of childhood sexual violence. And, uh, like, it's, it's not easy to do that to me because, well, first of all, that was, like, over 40 years ago, right? And yeah. second of all, um, I, I just, I've been through enough stuff that I've got a fairly thick skin. And third, I know that it's coming from a troll. And yeah. since it is coming from a troll... It's not a genuine statement. He doesn't really think that, and I don't have to well, deal I don't, with that. I don't. But I don't. But he think was, he's that a doesn't troll, change the but... fact. Oh, he is a troll. He is an absolute troll. And there's there's here's one that I will I will give you. He switched to a new account to continue to pursue my account specifically. Nice. Um, after he was banned under God Evolves, he is now Lori somebody an author uh, hates women is the name of his account. And uh, it's at Lori Hates, and it's Lori with an I. And uh, he went through and pretended that all of the uh, discussions that happened with his God Evolves account, which and, and he has admitted that that was his account, uh, never happened. It's like he's he answered things in uh, discussion threads with me as if none of the previous discussion existed. And he literally lied. He claimed that discussion never happened. Oh. And until I proved to him that it was still there, you know, that, that I had evidence of it still, you know, he, he was not going to admit that it ever happened. Once he discovered that I had evidence that the conversation did happen, that I had, uh, that I had documentation, um, mm -hmm. that, that he quit talking to me. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> but he did, at one point, in the God Evolves account, go through my tweets. A whole mm -hmm. year of tweets. Oh, yeah. To find yeah. something to dig up to be offended at. What he did was dig up a picture I posted of uh, buns that had been split down the middle. They were football-shaped. And there was, on the left side of the container of buns, was ones that hadn't been glazed. And they were fat and puffy and on the right mm -hmm. side were ones that had been put in a hot glaze in it and it shriveled them up so um i i posted a picture before and after and i labeled it before and after and the before is fat and puffy like the fat and puffy ones and the after is skinny like the skinny ones and of course mm. he equated them which you know it was it was innuendo uh he equated them to female genitalia 
and immediately, mm. st you know, started trying to make it something offensive. Um, but which is, but what, what could possibly offensive become of that? Even if it was female genitalia, you're just doing a pun on a sexual pun on buns. Yeah. So, uh, it's, but it's the so uh, the the glazed yeah, ones like were it, all shriveled up, take, so like, it was like oh. Offense. Yeah, he what? was gonna he was gonna try to make it a statement that sex shrivels up women's genitalia and makes them, you know, no longer any good or something stale. He thought they were stale, and uh, <laughs> well, so such bullshit. I saw I that image. And and I, it was I, obvious. <laughs> I went it's, through. I, that... Well, I went through a whole discussion with him about that, and eventually followed it up with a meme that I made out of part of the discussion where I just said, "You got triggered by bread." <laughs> and uh, that's like my response to him now for everything. You got triggered by bread, but mm, the that's fact a, is that he... meme, that yeah. meme, okay, that meme, mm -hmm. it could. When I looked at it, I was like, yeah, this is this is a this is a sexuality meme, but all it means is that this is after sex, not that women are shriveled bread. I know, like. And, and, and he, I, I, I got the innuendo, but 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 he he decided to make it a lot more vicious than I think it was intended. It just meant like, you know, the the buns that were glazed look a little bit more like they were recently, you know, rowed hard and put away wet. Not right. that they were, not that <laughs> but he they was going like, to make it uh, a older or less desirable. No, in fact, the, actually, the glazed ones are yummier because they're sugary, but. Uh, he uh, he was going to make it a slut shaming meme and he was he basically the thing that really was interesting to me about it though was i posted that in february it's january which means it's a year old and yeah. uh, yep. so so because he was mad at me over over him not being able to bait me into saying something reportable and by the way my my profile picture if you go to twitter is his statement that that he was going to get me banned he was going to, uh, you know, go through my, my my tweets to find something reportable and get me banned. Um, and, and now that account that said that is, is banned. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> which like, is just he, great. No, he was, he was, he was, he was literally bragging about having... Having ban gotten Karen banned, yes. You were next mm -hmm. on the list, and yep. he had a whole list of people that he was going to go after to get banned, which is in itself bannable it's it's not it's not well, okay to actually just... twitter says it's not because i did report him for that and i got back a statement that there was no violation really yes mm -hmm. saying that he was going to exploit twitter's toss to get people banned uh, for disagreeing with him is not a violation of toss if terms of service for anybody who's wondering um yeah that's I don't. I guess I'm. I, I'm old. That's been around for a long time. But I guess there are probably people that don't know it. But in any case, uh, yeah, that was. And he went through a year of my tweets because he was mad that he couldn't bait me into saying something reportable, and and because I put that as my profile picture, uh, and because he could not contradict me in an argument um, effectively, and. Uh, and 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 looked for something to be offended, and that was the only thing he found was was that buns meme, and and he tried so hard. he's still trying to make hay with that. I finally ended up starting to to uh, uh, we've <laughs> and somebody asked in the chat what's toss, so Allison you were right, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah I finally ended up starting to post like pictures of bread that looks sexual would look sexual to him like you know there's uh, Martha Stewart thing that is canned bread and the top of it is rounded and um, I posted pictures of loaves of bread that were split in the middle and round so they looked like big butts and <laughs> he finally muted me um, but but yeah oh my god like yeah, the whole you time that... the whole time I was writing my defense good, good, good. of feminist men's right to the benefit of the doubt and due process I had a feminist man harassing me <laughs> By feminist yeah. standards, like I'm not really sure buns. I can consider it and your puns. real <laughs> harassment, but by feminist standards, and by by feminist standards, he was even sexually harassing me. So to be fair, <laughs> Allison, to be fair, Allison, she deserves to be harassed over puns. Yeah, well, she deserves <laughs> to have her puns slapped, spanked, <laughs> paddled. 
uh, wicked, sticky, wicketed with a sticky wicket. You never know, um, Karen. And, I might just eat that up. And <laughs> and maybe maybe um, uh, buttered, uh, buttered, yeah, battered, battered, battered buns, battered, Deep. batter her buns. Deep fry. That, 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 I don't know if that's completely battered sexual. Buns. Deep fried battered buns. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Just make sure. Just make. <laughs> Just Southern sure fried. So Southern oh, fried. Oh wait, deep there fried battered puns is what I was deep saying. Deep fried battered puns. Yeah. You she deserves, love she deserves every minute. Buns. You she, love she, every she, minute. You like it and you know I it. I hate your puns. You know, and my my <laughs> man my you man has only my just puns recently for breakfast. started she, he's only just recently started doing puns. Okay. Oh, this this is as bad as when he was like when he used to go and visit every day our wholesome memes and our dad jokes. <laughs> okay, and he'd and he'd just like he'd just rattle them off to me. He'd be like, "I'm busy doing something. I'm busy reading a research paper or like watching some kind of like congressional hearing or something, right?" And and he's he's like, "Hey, Karen, 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 what's brown and sticky?" A stick. <laughs> oh, for God's God. sake. Oh, that's terrible. That's a oh. terrible, terrible, terrible dad it's joke. It's a dad joke, Allison. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I'm just, just trying to think. Like, what would we or call it if we, injected, uh, if we injected cream into Hannah's buns? It's it's literally like... It, it's, <laughs> he he would literally look at that. You, must you would have cream-filled buns. That okay, Hannah, would be a... When, when, yeah, when, you'd have the, cream-filled buns. Like, would they be considered you, a type of profiterol? What was that shirt that you Possibly. had where it was like You mean you that's irrelevant? Her? Oh, oh, no. oh, the that I made that shirt. That was yeah, my I shirt know that I made on did. Zazzle. Let me uh masher and stock it, it had a potato uh, and and a celery. Good start. And they were they and weren't even anthropomorphic. They just had faces. Um so like they didn't have bodies, just a, a recognizable barely cuz I can't draw worth shit. Barely recognizable potato. I mean, it's sad when you have trouble drawing a potato, right? You know, that's uh, barely that's recogn fetish, right? recognizable celery. What? That's that's going to be somebody's fetish, you know. Oh yeah, a barely yeah. recognizable potato. And the the barely recognizable potato was saying to the celery, uh, calling the celery a stalker, and the celery was <laughs> calling the potato a masher. Oh man! For for all of those who aren't ninety seven years. Masher was uh, the common uh, colloquial term in the United States for a man who would harass a woman in public. You masher! Yeah, my favorite masher sketch, though, has to be the little old man and the little old lady from Laughing. I cannot think of their names, but they like they went through a whole series of sketches that just started with she'd be sitting on the bench and he would come along. And you know, humming or singing under his breath, and walk behind the bench with his cane, and you could see how frail, what a frail old man he was. And then he would sit down on the bench next to her, and she'd scoot away from him. And as he she'd scoot away, he'd scoot next to her, and they scooted all the way to the end of the bench, so she had no place left to go. And he'd sit down next to her, and then he'd say something to her like, uh, "You know, do you believe in the hereafter?" And and she'd say, "Why, why, yes, yes, I do," you know thinking of religion, and he'd say, well, then you know what I'm here after. And she'd <laughs> whack him with her purse. So, like, it would totally not fly today because feminists would get pissed off about the mashing, and men's rights activists would get pissed pissed off about the beating as part of the humor, right? And, uh, you know, although I think all of us would be able to laugh at it if we, uh, I just uh, think uh, it's uh, a you know, groaner, walked away right? from like, our... And it's, I, and it's I'm, silly. I'm not offended by it, other than groaner it is right it is a groaner but what was really funny was in the course of the the laugh in television show they they created a story out of it and they went through and even had a wedding um and and if i remember right she jilted him at the altar because she just couldn't or he jilted her at the altar i can't remember which one but it was basically one of them decided they weren't marriage material and jilted the other at the altar. And then they went back to the the masher scene. Um, but it was just funny. The masher and the, the, the purse whack whacking scene. Uh, yeah. That was just in the days before all of this stuff was politicized. Oh, uh, remember, you remember the Bugs Bunny 
the Bugs Bunny in the theater when Elmer Fudd was trying to get him, and she's like, and he's like, excuse me, pardon me, and pardon me, pardon me, like to to get to Bugs Bunny in the middle of the the row of seats, and then he's Bugs Bunny's dressed like an old lady. He's like, she's like, oh no, you don't. I'm getting awfully tired of this, and she starts whacking him with his cane. You masher, masher. Like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I love I love that kind of humor. I think I think it's hilarious, right? But um but it's like it's it's humor from a bygone era. So it for everybody, like yeah, for everybody I've got, I finally found the image and I've got the image up on the screen now the before and after. You can see the you got. I made the the pun out of it. He went through in the conversation and um you can't see where he says you're sick, but I I had this conversation with one of my one of my Twitter friends and you know, he he uh I, I had told God Evolves, you you realize you just told everyone what you saw, not what I said. Uh, right? And then Stellar Human Being says, I see some tasty food before and after it's cooked. Makes me ready for dinner. So I had to explain the ones on the left were glazed uh, or the ones on the right were glazed in a vat of heated sugar. They are extremely tasty. Um by the way, I got those and at the Walmart. The ones on the left are not glazed. That's right, the, the ones on the left are not glazed. And uh, let's see if I can I can move the video window. I just have to unlock it. Oh yeah, and it. the ones the ones on the right um, are, are glazed, <laughs> and probably because they were put into a heating process, they're a little bit little bit like they're yeah. gapy. Yeah, if like you look the at them, they're a little bit. Yeah, they they the shape has changed slightly. Ne next they're... time, <laughs> next time, if you want to trigger more male feminists, you should get get the same kind of but with cream injected into them. Yeah, there we go. And, and but those yeah, look like that, that would make yeah. them very upset. Well, one of the things I, I posted was a, a an image somebody had posted of donuts where the glaze on the donuts had melted and was running out the middle of the donut. Um, <laughs> I told him he was fun and posted that, and he, <laughs> he was just like, you're helping me now! And I was like, no, I'm just making fun of you. But yeah, oh his response <laughs> to this... Um, they are extremely tasty, I said, and he goes, "You're sick." <laughs> so, oh my god! Yeah. Oh so my god! And again, I, I okay. You even even if even if we're bread. talking, <laughs> even if we're talking about female genitalia, unless she's got bacterial vaginosis, yeah, she's probably gonna be pretty tasty. <laughs> you know, or has a shower in like three weeks or something. He won't though She's... because he's very salty. But oh, <laughs> well, I don't know if maybe clearly he doesn't eat enough pineapple. Not not in a good way, right? Uh, but well, yeah, salty so nuts that's are not like, bad. like seriously. I just I just found it. I just found it amusing though, because like here I am going back and forth between my my writing and uh, responding to, to notifications on Twitter. Because it's the middle of the night, so I don't get a lot of notica notifications in the middle of the night most of the time, because most of the time people in my area are not up. And uh, But this guy, who is from the United States, uh, he, he's up. Um, he's up because I'm up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure of it. And... Uh, I was I was going back and forth with him about that and uh and and basically dealing with all of the things that I was like, you know, don't stereotype feminist men for doing these things and then he decided to do all of them. You know, I, at least he's not in close proximity so he couldn't hit me or anything like that. Mm, <laughs> yeah, but again, still we have to give the uh, benefit of the doubt and Yeah, he might not have done that. God. Even to evolved God, he might not have um, done that just because it's it is a taboo. It's just it's just yeah. so funny. Um, the guy it, is it is funny. The guy is a dipshit. There well, we go, Ruth Buzzy and Artie Johnson. Things. That's who I was talking about. Yeah, and then they wouldn't be. Uh, but but and and Grayman Media, Ruth Buzzy and Artie Johnson wouldn't be acceptable. But Gord Goldie Hawn dancing with uh you know painted in flowers would be empowering. Goldie Hawn was so adorable. Like, if you ever go, if you ever want to see, like, the epitome of the level of adorability a kitten has, but in a human being that, that has reached adulthood, um, although she might have even, she might have been as young as 17 when she started laughing, I'm not sure, but go back and, and watch Goldie Hawn on laughing. She seriously was like a kitten. Uh, it's just, it's, it's fun to watch. And she's, 
actually an, an incredibly highly intelligent woman, um, but she's she's very very good at portraying, you know, the dumb blonde stereotype. But you have to be really smart to pretend to be dumb like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it and it's like because if you if you're only sort of moderate intelligence, you you won't get the the performance right. Uh, and uh, and she really was fun to watch. Um, but, uh, oh my gosh, now I feel old. And I wasn't even around when it was out on the air the first time. I'm talking about reruns. But uh, Strontium, Strontium X Nitrate says, what's laughing? <laughs> Look on YouTube. Get on you. Well, you're on YouTube, obviously. But when you get a chance, when you're not watching our stream, search YouTube for Rowan, as in R-O-W-E-N, and Martin's Laugh-In. And you will find it. And it's it's humor from the 60s. If you ever saw a TV show back in the 70s called The Electric Company, it was modeled after Laugh-In. Um, the really? rapid-fire sketch routine in yeah, Sesame kids. Street was also modeled after Laugh-In. Uh, so, like, th th that actually had some influence there. Um, I love but, it. But, yeah, it, it, was, it was a terrific terrific show uh it was it wasn't i think like, it's where isn't that the show can that i can i actually comes, ask for like the a phrase the phrase you bet your sweet bippy comes from laughing right yep i think so uh sake yeah. to me was one that was actually a common phrase at the time but sake to me you remember um at gen xers will remember you can't do that on television and how every time somebody said water water would get dumped on them um mm -hmm. And that came from Rowan and Martin's laughing. Suck it to me would get you sprayed with this weird looking water pistol. Um, and uh, there were other things like that. Uh, they even had they even had uh, Richard Nixon said suck it to me at one point. He didn't get sprayed, but you know he he had there was a vid there was video of of Richard Nixon going suck it to Anna. me. What Anna? <clears throat> What? Okay. So Goldie Hawn? Yes. All right. So how does that relate to evolved god, puns, and bread? Oh gosh. Oh, if, no. If, it was uh, it came, it came you... up because I I would Yeah. The masher shirt. The masher shirt. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, yeah. so we're, well, we're we've essentially wandered far yeah, afield. I read a I read a chat um that mentioned a super the Goldie. Chat. So, yes, not a super chat, just a regular chat. I will get to the super oh, okay, chats. Oh, yeah. okay. But, because uh, this was related, we were talking about the Masher thing, and somebody made a chat about that. Um, okay, I want to, but, now that laughing, I've interrupted, Hawn, I might as well continue. To, well, no, hang on. On Roten, I'll, I'll give you a real quick rundown. On Rowan Martin's laughing, she did a, a dance routine um, where she had, like, body paint, flowers and stuff, hippie stuff all over her. And they used to play, um, they used to play little shorts from that. In between, and they had uh, a short that they would play in between sketches of like all of them dancing like it was at a dance party. Um, but she was, she would get focused on because she was just cute. She was like cute overdose. So that's that's the history of it, and it and it was definitely what feminists would label today uh, objectification. But Goldie Hawn was a go-go dancer before she became famous. So mm. there you go. All right. Uh, all Allison. right. Well, first of all, I wanted to apologize for interrupting the stream at the beginning. Uh, no I worries. was indeed. Well, well, actually, it wasn't technically me. It was both myself and my husband, Jonathan. We were testing out our GoPro's streaming ability because we want to use it to to do some streaming. And he streamed to the channel, and I wasn't thinking straight, and I just didn't think about the fact that you guys were doing the show so for 30 seconds you see the inside of his his uh his office and him wandering <laughs> around <laughs> that's All why right, people were that's asking if that probably, was my, my husband that, doesn't then, look anything like jonathan actually um but if, what, what uh, are you gonna say karen there is that when you said oh no and set the that stream to unlisted no, he set the stream to unlisted because he was doing a test. He didn't want everybody to oh, see the inside. Oh or... my fucking god! Well, yeah, it's we, we, we we crossed the streams and you hijacked our stream. Yeah, I know. Oh, I hijacked bitch. my I hijacked Handy Badger Radio's own stream. 
for my, for my shenanigans. Well, if you want and, that off of there, you're going to have to take it, it off back. and, uh, yeah, and remove that. But, but it worked really well. Like, the stream, like the, the video quality is quite good, particularly oh. since it's streaming through, uh, you know, the GoPro. All right, Kyle. well, good well, for it, you, it's... Allison. We're At really we glad your experiment worked out for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, too. Well, All right. here's, here's the other problem with, with YouTube. Um, because even if, you, even if he hadn't been streaming... Because they have changed their way they do things from being able to set up streams ahead of time, you can't change anything while another person is streaming or it changes the stream. Like, I can't go in and set up a future stream while, uh, well, well, say, HBR News is streaming, even if, if I wasn't on that stream. Um, I can't set up a future... Because if I went in and set up a future stream while that was streaming using YouTube's new system, I would override the stream that was going on at the time instead. It just, it's, so it's a mess. So, like, there's, it's, it's, uh, partly, you know, you guys may be screwing up, and partly there wasn't a way to do that without screwing it up. Uh, but I am gonna get us into the Super Chats, because I just realized it's later than I thought it was. Um, Can I just, before you go, uh, just remind everybody that the, our only income through uh, YouTube now, because they demonetize everything, and YouTube is, I, I don't know what they're doing with this policy. They've announced it, but who knows when they're rolling it out. They're going to start removing channels that don't make money, so please... They've already done super... that. They've already okay, started. Okay, they've already started, started to do that. Yeah. So your super chats may mean the difference between YouTube being here and not being here, and if you do feel bad about sending money to YouTube, I mean... It does allow us to get the word out on YouTube to keep our channel, so we just sort of have to play by their rules. And the other thing is that your super chats do keep the the Badger Cave in operation. So, I mean, literally, like that—that's what the 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 money for the Badger Cave is coming from. So just just think of all the the revenue going to flow into the Badger Cave and yeah, and like I, I, you know, I'm 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 just just to be just to be clear, I'm not really sure. Like I I'm pretty sure that my channel will be fine because. I still have a significant video library that still gets a significant number of views, and a lot of it is still monetizable through ads, right? And so, essentially, my channel is still commercially viable even if I don't do super chats, even if I don't do anything like that. But because so much of Honey Badger's content is, uh, is not monetizable through ads... Because um, somebody on yeah. this show keeps saying fuck. No, no, that's you know not why. why. It's it's the I, they demonetize us. Fuck you, Allison. Like they demonetize <laughs> us as soon as I put in the title of our videos, especially if I put in anything about due process, anything about feminism, uh, any at all. Like they just I as it's soon as I create like there's an agenda, or yeah, something. or hmm. or like there's a. There's an algorithm that demonetizes our channel. Well, you need, you need to, but you need listen, to do guys. What? I have a, I have something super else chats. then that I gotta say, and and then I'm gonna go into the super chats because this is this is a a night where I have to leave on time to to go to my other job. So, uh, based on the information that Allison and Karen just disclosed, I can guarantee you that my channel is gonna be gone if it's not gone already. So if you look up my channel on YouTube, it's it's just my name on, on on is the name of the channel, Hannah Wallen. You'll be able to see it. Um, it might even be linked in the low bar of this video. I think it actually is. The links um, are all annihilated when I when I did my shenanigans. Really? But it should be in an associated channel. Either all right. Well, you no. Know, um, look on any other Honey Badger live stream, and the link will be in the low bar. Because uh, I'm I'm sure the link to my channel it's still... still there. Just right. just search, and it's the top result when you search Hannah Wallen channel. All right. So that said, um, everybody has my permission to download my videos and keep them. Um, I have them on BitChute, but uh, I don't I don't. They're not copyrighted. Um, I, I am perfectly fine with people uh, sharing them and telling people who I am, and I would rather see them preserved that way by anybody that wants to have them than... Yeah, and uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a Herculean task either, right? She's, she's only got about two pages worth of videos on that yeah, channel. Yeah, I was only on... I, I think I only put 
was uploaded videos over the course of about two years, and uh, I didn't upload weekly like a lot of people. I uploaded yeah. when I had something to talk about, when a topic came yeah. up that I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I, uh, like, that's one of the reasons my channel is defunct is that I'm I'm doing this instead. Uh, but mm -hmm. the other one was I I really wasn't happy with a lot of stuff YouTube was doing. And I'm fine with being part of a YouTube channel, but I really wasn't going to continue mine. Well, my YouTube videos have all been uh, demonetized. So YouTube considers due process uh, uh, to be politically incorrect. Uh, YouTube thinks that it's it's not okay to criticize feminist criticism of men's rights activism. YouTube thinks that saying that that men have as much right to expect their consent to be sought prior to a sex act um, as women do is reprehensible. And uh, that's one of the first videos they demonetized, actually, the, my, my video on consent where I, where I said that uh, all right, ladies, if you're going to have this standard for consent, you have to live up to it. You have to do the same thing that you're expecting of men. Don't do anything to him without asking. And uh, don't expect him to do anything without you showing enthusiasm because you don't have the right to expect him to face the possibility of a rape charge just to have sex with you. Those things uh, got me demonetized. Uh, so feel free to... Uh, in fact, actually... While we're at it, that video is why you can't post political videos on our video. The the mods at our video decided that it was just so horrible to say women should have to ask for your consent to have sex with you just as much as you should have to ask for, for their consent to have sex with them. They decided that was such a bad thing to say that they don't want any more political videos uh, and, oh. and they banned political well. videos because I made the front page with that video, um, but uh, and and and, uh, and I got shadow banned <laughs> shortly after. Uh, mm. So and I have a different account than the one that I had when that one when that one became uh, popular. But yeah, go through and you know save everything you want, uh, and you know don't hesitate to share it. It's it's stuff I want people to know, and I want people to see, uh, and and I I don't want any uh, I don't want it gone, uh, and I like I said it's also on BitChute, uh, but BitChute is a little harder to share, and I've got stuff I've been putting stuff on Minds, but it's a little harder to share from there too. Uh, if you post a YouTube video to Twitter, it opens on Twitter. Those other ones I haven't been able to get that to work, uh, so. So feel free to feel free to do that. Now, uh, anybody that downloads the cake video, please make sure you download the the information in the low bar on that one specifically, um, because that one has I had I had help with. Um, I think there's another one I had help like that with. If there's somebody in the it has been given credit in the low bar for helping me with that video copy that and make sure it stays associated with the video because that was somebody else that helped me and it's important that they get credit for their work but aside from that like this is this is my copyright release um you know go ahead right. go right ahead now okay that said, albert nada is saying super chats please he's got a two-hour walk ahead of him oh gosh so that like sounds like fun. super chats i'll bet you're in good shape um let's see we have i read that one and I read that one. So we have Albert Albert Nada Retro donated uh, five dollars uh, through Super Chat. It says, uh, "Feminist ran a red light and totaled her car. Blames patriarchy because men invented cars, red lights, and telephone poles. Wouldn't be surprised." <laughs> um, then Albert Nada Retro gave us five dollars again and said, "There are groups on Facebook with misandry in their names. If uh, they come for us, then they better go after them." Um, there was. There was a face group, Facebook group for a while that was specifically advocating genital targeted violence against adult men. Uh, and it was like, it wasn't a fetish thing and it wasn't private. It was, it was just, you know, 
cut men's dicks off, kick them in the balls, nasty stuff like that. Just really, really uh, uh, hateful feminist rhetoric. And my attention was drawn to it because somebody else reported it, and Facebook told them it was not uh, in violation of their policy. And they had yeah, because it wasn't it. advocating violence against being important. Right, and and they had reported it because um, they had posted one of those. I think it was one of those videos where you know you have the social experiment with that we, ex we mentioned before with the man and the woman um, portraying abuse. And they decided that it it uh, portrayed violence against women, and therefore it was bad, uh, even though it was uh, a video about how people react to violence against the sexes and demonstrated a problem for men. Um, so they wanted they wanted to see if they could get people to uh, to write in and and uh, you know contact Facebook about this, and I did. Um, I actually it's one of the I don't usually a lot, but this was interesting, and I wanted to see what kind of response I would get. I wish I still had it. Um, I wrote a complaint out, and I, I uh, sent it through their system. Um, you have to go through and report it for a specific thing, and there was there was a report at the time, I don't know if there still is, but specifically for uh, violent content. So I reported it for violent content, and in the space where you get to actually say something about it, I I didn't just mention the gender reverse. I I specified, you know, what is Facebook gonna do if somebody uh, who is part of this group decides to actually follow through with the stuff that it's saying that people should do? And uh, I got back a response that they had violated the terms of service and it was, you know, being, they basically thanked, thanked me for my input and uh, I, apparently they hadn't thought of that. But, so it was all right as long as Facebook wasn't going to be considered liable for it. But as soon as I mentioned the idea that, hey, you have uh, given your approval to this, this group and they're actually saying people should do these things. Uh, and and they're violent things, and they can cause injury, and injury is actionable. Then they decided that it was a problem. So, oh well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, it's all about cover, but you know, yeah, like it's you all know, about and, the, the the cash. You expect Zuckerberg to care well, about you know, anything honestly, that doesn't have anything to do with cash? I, you know, like I, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out how I feel about Mark Zuckerberg because, like. I do agree with him with his stance on political ads. Facebook should not be the arbiter of what I agree is with that too. true and what is not. And uh, and even Facebook's fact checkers in terms of news media, in terms of things that are posted as news, should not necessarily uh, be tasked with fact checking political ads because political ads are so lar so incredibly much a matter of opinion rather than just fact and uh, and also if a politician is going to lie if a candidate is going to lie wouldn't you want to know that right, right, they right. lied right you know yeah, so he I'm, definitely I'm kind has of a good point behind but... him on that but but at the same time um you know like i, I do think he's a robot um, and a cash eating machine who well, doesn't allow seen the his smile children, video. who doesn't allow him, his children, his own children, to be on fucking Facebook. <laughs> Facebook has an age limit. Most people don't realize this, but you're At not 13. supposed to be on Facebook before the age of 13, right? And yeah, if you but, are on Facebook at the age of 13, it recommends parental still, supervision and yeah. limited. Um, limited use. Well, yeah, that's covering so, like, their asses, right? Well, but, but it's also advice. I mean, it's there. They, you can't just give advice without. Um, meaning I know it. I mean, they're like they're like yeah okay, but once you're 18 years old, you can do meth all you want. Once you're eight, no, 18 uh, years old, we're not responsible for any engagement you have with us because you're adult and you can make your own decisions. That's basically that's right. I agree. I agree. So, yeah, I, no, I don't have a problem with that either. Um, my, in fact, I, I don't think Facebook should even have to give that advice. Parents should know that on their own. 
Yeah. Like, you yeah. supervise your kids on the internet. My kid didn't even have a computer that, that the screen wasn't clearly visible all the time to the rest of the room um, until till he was 18. Like, he, he actually... See, and... He didn't have a computer upstairs in his room until he was an adult. His computer was in the living room, and it faced... It was a... Uh, you know, the back of it was toward it the wall, the room, yeah. and it faced the room. He couldn't do anything yeah. on the computer that, that was, was private. Uh, even yeah, at no, 17, I... he couldn't do anything on the computer that was private. So... Uh... See, and my kids... My kids, I've given... But I think, you know, in terms of, uh, like, just in terms of my judgment about my children, right, my judgment about their capabilities and the fact that, you know, like, okay, my older two kids, right, I used to offer them booze, right? Okay. They're like 15, Let's, 16 years we're old. We're not going to get into that, to, and I used to, it's, and, yeah, We but do I, not I, have time. But you have to, you still have to be aware that your children are doing things on the fucking internet. Well, the main thing is the internet isn't any safer than letting your kids run around downtown by themselves, right? So you just, you treat it the same way. Yeah. Anything that you would supervise them on in real life, you, you, you just because it's in a computer doesn't necessarily, doesn't, it, you know, involves a computer doesn't necessarily mean they, they need any less supervision. They actually need okay. more. Super chats. So, super you guys chats. need supervision. Yeah. yeah, super chats. Um, let's see. We read uh, the Facebook one. Meredith Glassberg gave us five dollars and said, "Remember that some male feminists have mothers, daughters, sisters, wives, and other women in their lives that they care about, and that influences them." That's actually a big thing for me. Um, a lot of a lot of guys ended up feminists because some guy, you know, did something rotten to their sister, or because they their parents are divorced and their mom talked shit about their dad. You know, or uh, yeah, they've had they they had been raised in a a female centric environment and heard all kinds of stuff about how great feminism is. Like a lot of guys become feminists not because they're aggressive or because of what you know they think themselves just on their own, but as because of how they were raised or because of experiences that they've had with people in their lives. And you know, this is this is just logic. I mean, a lot of women that are in the men's rights movement came into the men's rights movement after watching a man in their life go through an ordeal of vexatious litigation or malicious prosecution or both uh, at the hands of an ex or, uh, you know, seeing their parents split up and realizing how little power their dad had in terms of maintaining a relationship with them or, uh, you know, marrying, marrying a guy with an ex-wife and finding out just how easy it is for her to uh, to just drain the shit out of him in in uh, divorce court, and uh, and they didn't necessarily realize the issues were the way they were until they saw it in action, and found out, hey, this is the way the law is. Hey, this is the way the court system is. Hey, this is what men are subjected to, and decided, you know what, that's not fair, and became anti-feminists or men's rights activists. So it's not surprising that there are male fem like there are male feminists with perfectly good intent. Um, they don't always last simply because feminism's mask isn't very good at staying on. Yeah, uh -huh. and it the, the real sad thing is that it, it would take something major happening to a male feminist for him to wake up, you know, and 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 shake this this image that he has of of you know equality and, and what should be and you know what's good for women a, a lot of the men or male feminists who come out of it it, it takes something tragic ha to happen to them in their own lives for them to see that oh my this woman was hitting me i called the cops and they arrested me yeah you know well and it, uh, male feminists really who that, have good intent it, are the most vulnerable to false accusations yes. by yeah. female feminists who have bad intent or who yes. are mis very, very misguided. Mm -hmm. So Darth Sonic gave us uh, 199 and said, Aye, Super Chats are back. Um, then he gave us another 999 and said, On the topic of the immediate reaction men had to seeing a woman slapped in the face, the funny thing is, despite this common knee-jerk reaction, Slapping women in the face is really common in porn. 
it's a particular genre of porn, though, um, and it would be unacceptable in porn that isn't specific to that genre. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the porn or, you know, the fetish of um, ball crunching or smashing or whatever, where, Ooh. like, yeah, I know. Whereas, you know, more brutal. <laughs> I'm yeah, not, very I'm not really much more no, I, I just, I just don't like squishing anything that's soft. Well, yeah. or anything that's mochi, like little, little, little squishy squish balls. That, that's fun. Like, not I, like I, somebody's well, balls. Yeah, yeah not like somebody's not actually. But like, yeah, human but like, okay, I, I don't, parts. I don't like the idea of a fucking mammogram. Okay, and I'm gonna have yeah. to start doing them next year, right? Because yeah, I'm of you're those. taking a soft part of my body and you're squashing it as flat as you can. Oh, but first they they grab it and pull on it. It's yeah. I know. It's, I it's, know. Yeah. And it's torture. It's torture, and women hate it. There is not a woman in the world other than some kind of freaking weird subpopulation of like fucked up fetishists <laughs> who would get yeah. off on that. Right, so actually, you know what? The worst part of that ugh. for me isn't having my boobs smashed; it's not being able to wear deodorant. Because I am a coffee drinker, a heavy coffee drinker, um, and and if you drink a lot of coffee and you don't wear deodorant, you go about five minutes into your day, and then you start to smell terrible. So <laughs> I hate, I hate not being able to wear deodorant. Um, but going on to the next super chat, Ben Z gave us twenty dollars and said, "Keep up the good work. Y'all are one of the reasons I haven't completely lost faith in humanity." Um, thank you very much for that. That's really sweet. That and and, and glazed buns. And glazed buns, yeah, <laughs> glazed buns are, are a very redeeming thing. Um, but uh, I haven't lost faith in humanity. As much as I run into of people being assholes on social media and everything, I you know you deal with people in real life too. And and for every asshole out there, I know like 20 people who are just ordinary every day, deal with you mostly fairly, as best they can, and they, they deal with you fairly, and they expect to be dealt with fairly, and they just live their lives. And mm -hmm. and at least, you know, five of them are, are stellar awesome people that I love with all my heart, you know, out of, out of like, out of that group. And so it's... I hate to say, you know, losing faith in reality. If you lose faith in reality, you've been on social media too much. And and I say that as somebody that's on social media too much all the time. So, and I'm not even that social of a person. Um, but thank you very much for that anyway. Darth Sonic gave us 1999 and said, On women being abused versus kids being abused, I remember this one instance of a British woman, a British man socking a woman in the face when she attacked his daughter. He got a lot of crud from from normal men for doing this and trad cons for defending his child isn't that great for defending his child against a physical assailant he was the bad guy because the person who wanted to abuse his child was a woman <laughs> Albert I don't know if I could say this <laughs> gave us two dollars and and said quote I've heard chloroform is a great aphrodisiac end quote <laughs> <laughs> so I got a comment to make. This is one thing that drives me. I nuts. think he was. I think he was paraphrasing. There, there's a. There's actually a movie that's from. I can't remember which one. It sounds like it came from one of the Fletch movies. Um, but in any case, uh, on the topic of rape jokes, rape jokes exist to ridicule. And, and shame and make fun of and, and belittle and de, uh, demystify, I guess you could say, in a way that you know makes them not so scary uh, that you can't deal with it. The mentality of the rapist. They are all about making fun of the stupidity and, and ridiculousness and irrationality of the rapist. They, they're not making fun of victims. This is a great example, because because you 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 say that I've heard chloroform is a great aphrodisiac. No, <laughs> you it are wrong. Really that is a dumb thing on. to say. You moron. It really turns her on. Yeah, while yeah. knocking her out. Yeah, yeah. No, and, it's it's the juxtaposition of the horrible and the and and, and the the bubbly. 
Right, but the horrible is that the that the rapist has said something incredibly, uh, you know, not aware, not not understanding, like completely wrong, like and it and it is. It's they all rape jokes. If you look at rape jokes, they all make fun of, uh, of the attitude of the rapist, the behavior of the rapist, the mentality of the rapist, um, you know, the, the sexual the, the, prowess of the rapist. They all rely on recognizing. That rape is bad and wrong, and and uh, nobody approves of it, and yeah. that rapists are deficient, right? Like right. this is the thing that they're deficient about, like the the, the idea that aphrodisiac, whatever, right, is okay. Chloroform puts you to sleep. Knocks you Aphrodisiacs out. Aphrodisiacs turn you on. So if the only way a woman can get turned off on enough to have sex with you is after she has been knocked unconscious then that says something about your sexual desirability well sir. it's making fun of the fact that the guy uh doesn't recognize that it's wrong to knock someone out someone out so you i don't have sex i don't him. think it's making fun I of do. that he <laughs> recognize it's wrong i think it makes fun of the fact that he's so desperate to ha that he can't he cannot that that's convince the only way he a can woman get it, yeah. the only uh, way he can get it is is through it can be interpreted I, both I still, ways I, but in I, any I, case it's like i still I said, think it's the it's the breaking of the social norms that does it the the sudden breaking of social norms it'd be like if which, goldie Hawn again just suddenly, requires suddenly uh dropped into some possession and started uh shouting in like the dark speech yeah you know, but like, which again requires the the recognition in order to get the joke, you have to recognize that rape is a disapproved that behavior, that it's bad. You can't... It, rape jokes are only funny if the listener and the teller disapprove of rape. Yeah, that's, a, that's the only way that it's funny. And yeah. also, I did a I did a chloroform... It, uh, it does this rag smell of chloroform joke for the, for the latest ragining? And it was in response to a person... I don't know if he was a feminist, but they were laughing at the all, not all men. Mm. And I'm like, well, you realize often people use that to say not all men rape and, and other stuff like that. And I don't understand the humorous response to that. If you're If you're a guy laughing at the idea that not all men rape... Yeah, that it, sort of suggests something racist? about you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Zeranx gave us five dollars and said, "I can't stand arms outstretched offering hugs. Be hugged, and then you come back and charge me with sexual assault because you're uncomfortable after." Um, no, yeah, no. Uh, in in logic and reason, that's true. Although, if you actually went out on a Canadian street and stood there and put your arms out. With a t-shirt that said free hugs, and a woman came along drunk and hugged you, she might feel entitled to file charges later because you coerced her into hugging you by being out in public in a shirt that said free hugs when she was in that location too drunk to make her own decisions. Yeah, so, yeah. It's Canadian it land there. <laughs> well, th how can a woman resist a sale? Yep, that's it's not true. even half off. It's not even half price. It's free for fuck's sake. You see, now I'm only interested. I'm only interested in the hugs where the t-shirt is 100 percent off. Um, <laughs> oh my god, everybody! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Make sure you've you. got a good hand on your t-shirt. Right. Right. Fucking, she might, she might just leave, and you, and you have I'm nothing. I'm kidding. On. I think I just Hannah? about hugged everybody at ICMI, Hannah? and Ninja everybody kept their Ninja shirts on. t-shirt stealing. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah. Yes. You de you deserve death for that pun. <laughs> Uh, no, and and the thing is, the thing is, it was so bad, and yet so fast. Yeah. Right. It's like it's like. What? It's wait, like wait, wait, wait! You have this pun? fucked up brain, Hannah. This fucked up brain that so, has been like calibrated. We have to received a question. Immediately <laughs> find the a fucking. She, she's exact like a fucking most okay, horrible okay. pun to use. A split second after somebody opens their mouth. I know it's it's an incredible power, and it's sort of akin to and you know, she abuses feminists on Twitter. <laughs> feminists on Twitter, you I say something, the and they can sure. immediately <sighs> you they can immediately twist it into the most absolutely worst thing ever. Like I, <laughs> okay, Evolved Gods was a master at this. I had to just sometimes I had to get away from the keyboard and just be like. 
Wow. It really upset him, though, when uh, you do it back to him. (laughs) Yeah, I know. But I post, like, a study that studied male uh, victims of sexual assault, but only they asked only after the age of 16. And he would come back with, are you saying it's okay for people to rape children? Oh, he laughed the the shit out of that conversation. How the hell did that, how do you do that, sir? You have that power with puns. He has that power with reading in bad intent into everything. Now, see, I can do that. Kathy Newman. He's Kathy Newman at 9,000 levels. It takes yeah, effort no, he, he's, for me he's, to do it, but I can do that. I, it's just, I don't like to. But please, tell me what the pun was, because I, I think I missed it. Which one? The, the one that Karen called out and was like, oh, oh my god. Oh, the shirt, the 100% off. They were the, talking the sh- about the sale because it's free hugs, and I was like, I like the hugs for the shirt's And I was like, it's not even 50% off. off, and you were like, <laughs> oh, I... I want... fucking don't get it. I'm stupid. No, okay. Shirtless hugs. Okay, the, okay, the, 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 the thing was, she said, oh, oh, if somebody oh. was standing in a shirt that said free hugs, right? That was that was dad joke sexual harassment. <laughs> do, you oh see, my God. do you see what I'm They're getting like, at, Elf? Uh, 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 do you see my problem oh, with this? Jesus Christ. I'm oh not Jesus. Do, do you have a problem with my stupidity or her punning? Which is Both! It? Both! All the time! <laughs> we, we love you, Every Karen. moment of every day. No, I think, uh, I think I'll continue to just randomly co-op the stream with just okay, images yes. of the ceiling. <laughs> please just do. as Karen starts talking, every time she opens her mouth, oh, she'll Please do. Ceiling. Please. Ceiling. Ab- abs- I, I invite you to do that. <laughs> It'll just go to the image, going straight up to the ceiling, and I'll just look down and wave. There Hi, we Karen. go. Uh... <laughs> Uh, All right, let's shirtless hugs more... is life. Shirtless hugs is love. Just like Strontium X Nitrate says. They, they replace Shrek now. Um, okay. Ben Z gave us five dollars and said, "WTF?" <laughs> this is this is all in all caps. I'm not gonna yell because um, you guys won't like it if I do. WTF? What? The fuck? These motherfuckers best not be fucking with military discharges. I agree. I agree. If the guy had an honorable discharge. Uh, they don't have any business going after him for that. They don't have any business going after that discharge. They are not the military. They are a university. They are not part of the U.S. government. They are not involved, and they, they should they should fuck right the hell off with that. Um, that's The military can make their decisions based on that. And, and honestly, I don't think the military is going to do what they want because he'll be able to submit his evidence in that hearing. Uh, mm-hmm. And and he'll be able to submit his evidence in the hearing against the school too. So this is going to be interesting to an interesting case to watch. Uh, although it won't be the first one where the school's going to lose. Uh, Albert Nada gave us uh, another ten dollars and said, "If I can get myself in good, uh, in good enough shape, I'm going to celebrate my weight loss with a one night appearance at a strip club. Who, who going to come support me? Um, where? Wait, wait, <laughs> depends wait, wait, wait. on how Are far away it is." <laughs> Are are you going to be stripping, Alpha? Um, if he's walking two hours a a a day or something like that, I I imagine he's probably going to be in pretty good shape. Um, yeah, so yeah, just, that's I'm, probably the case. Is... He's going to celebrate oh, okay. his weight loss with a one night appearance, not a one night visit, a one night appearance. So that's that's my guess. Uh, so now we'll y'all to, now we'll y'all got to gotta decide. Super chats at you, El. Yeah, we'll have to throw super chats at, at Albert. Um, then we have Ray Patterson, uh, gave us $2 and said, inviting all to my, uh, at Patterson Ray on, on Twitter. So follow at Patterson, oh, that's Patson, not Patterson. Me and my dyslexia. There is no R, no E-R. It's P-A-T-S-O-N, uh, P-A-T-S-O-N-R-A-Y, at Patson Ray on Twitter. So if you want to follow him, follow him. Um, if you follow me, I will follow you back. I generally try to. If you have followed me and I haven't followed you back, tweet at me and tell me that I didn't follow you back, and I will. Because uh, every so often I miss notifications. And don't be afraid to nag me because I don't get upset about that when it's something like that. Um, Albert Nada, Albert N- Nada, or Nada Retro gave us uh, $2 and said if Hannah was a vigilante, then she'd be the pun dash isher. <laughs> Yep, that's me, Punisher. Um, 
And Ray Patson gave us $2 and said, A lot of anti-feminists want to be trad wife, not mod wife. Uh, that's true. Anti-feminists are not necessarily MRAs. And uh, there's anti the anti-feminist spectrum runs from people who are aware of and object to gynocentrism to people who are aware of and uh, uh, think gynocentrism is a good thing. And uh, so there's there are uh, trad cons, there are, um, that's traditionalist conservatives, there are conservatives who aren't necessarily traditionalists, there are career women, there are women, there are uh, men's rights activists, there are anti-feminists who simply feel that feminism is degrading, which it is, but uh, there's more to the problem than that. Um, there are there are women who are anti-feminist solely because of feminism's effect on women. Um, they're not wrong to be anti-feminist. They're just uh, playing victim of it. So, <laughs> but um, it's it's there's it's not quite the same as recognizing how damaging it is to men. But there's a lot of women that recognize that. Uh, you know, it is damaging to men, and the the lobbying effort that feminists have engaged in to to create a legal environment that could hurt those women's family members and their friends, uh, they recognize that that is wrong. Now, there are many of them that would still be willing to exploit it. Um, just because they recognize that it's wrong doesn't mean they wouldn't use it. But uh, but there are plenty of anti-feminists out there that are not men's rights activists. Uh, Polaris, Polaris 589, oh, I, wait, I missed one, I missed, oh, people are still super chatting and the list is moving down while I'm trying to read it. <laughs> um, Sierra de Flora gave us two dollars and said, uh, 30, uh, oh, said nothing. Uh, thank you, Sierra de Flora. If you had something that you were trying to say, uh, let us know. I'm, I'm watching the restream chat too, so hopefully I'll see it. Um, and Albert Nada gave us another two dollars and said, "Hannah, reload your videos to Daily Motion. I will look, but if I remember right, that requires a paid account uh, for the amount that I would be uploading. I might remake some of them too because the sound quality is really bad. I just haven't um, had the time to do anything like that uh, anytime recently." Uh, Polaris589 gave us five dollars and said, Note to YouTube, here's your pound of flesh, you filthy casuals. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Preston gave us two dollars and said, Miss YouTube turned this site into a gulag. Heart buns. Uh, Grayman Media donated or gave us uh, five dollars and said, Hope you discussed the concept of one woman's tux... Uh, Toxically masculine man is another woman's real man in the future. I, actually, I think we've talked about that a couple of times. It might be a good show topic. Because um, one of the things that I, I really object to is feminism's uh, uh, demonization of rugged masculinity that isn't in service to women. And uh, if you look back at um, movies and uh, plays and stuff like that from, from the past... Like, the, the John Wayne type character was a very ruggedly masculine man who didn't give a fuck what women thought. And the part of what made him sexy, part of what made Han Solo sexy, was that uh, they were immune to feminine sensibilities. You know, that they didn't just, like, and they were still, but they, they still had maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, angel underneath the the uh you know rough exterior and everything but they weren't you couldn't shame them into being better behaved and uh so yeah it would be definitely a good show topic uh tyler preston gave us five dollars and said how far can feminists use patriarchy to blame everything that goes wrong in their lives till it becomes meaningless um i don't think there's anything they can't blame on it honestly like, I've actually no. had feminists blame um, blame female violence against children on patriarchy. <laughs> Not just tolerance for female violence against children, but the behavior itself. 
existed because of patriarchy and toxic masculinity, that these women are just doing what men taught them. Expect them to do, you know, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, like, it, I don't, honestly, I don't think there's anything that they can't, so, the, this is the thing about a crazy conspiracy theory. And this same thing happens, a lot of conspiracy theories are like this. Uh, you twist reality to fit the theory when you believe in a theory like that. So, if you ask a feminist for evidence of patriarchy, they will not give you evidence of patriarchy. They will list off a bunch of things that they object to, um, whether they're real or not, and they will call those examples of patriarchy, <clears throat> and they think that the fact that they use the patriarchy theory, conspiracy theory, to explain those things makes them evidence to prove it. It's circular reasoning. Um, let's see. Darth Sonic gave us uh, it uh, gave us four ninety nine and said it wasn't even his wife or anything. It was just some crazy woman on the street that attacked his daughter. I think she was on PCP, but don't quote me. Well, it's a super chat. I have to quote you. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> since you said you think, that's that's a different story. Um, PCP is a hell of a thing. Uh, there was a cadet that I went to school with. Um, the the school I went to nursing school at started nursing school. I didn't finish nursing school, but where I started nursing school. Um, that also had a police academy, and uh, one of my friends was a cadet in that police academy. He had an officer come in talking about dealing with perps who were high, and he related a story. He was a, a police officer in that city. He related a story where he and his partner and several other officers responded to a scene where a perp was stabbing a woman multiple times and they shot him in the head and the, the PCP dulled his senses, his experience of any pain or any suffering of any kind so much that he didn't react with the kind of shock that you react when you're shot in the head or any other area. Uh, he turned to them and said, are you done yet? before he dropped dead because it didn't affect him and like obviously you get shot in the head you're gonna die uh, and the bleeding quickly did uh, did kill him but not before he had a chance to turn around and say that to them uh, and it, it didn't normally if somebody were to be shot like that uh, it would they would they would be done that would be it they would they would pass out or they would fall they would uh, jump back they would experience pain and they would would recognize it uh, but not this guy he just you know are you done yet i'm super and he he had that sense of not of being invulnerable uh so if she was that crazy and that guy uh and that guy slapped her and people condemned him for it um after she was attacking a child in that state uh like anybody condemning him for that that's reprehensible that kid was in serious danger if that was the case Egregious Charles gave us five dollars and said a feminist told me if men had to put up with the pain of mammograms for medical for the the medical establishment would have come up with something better. Um, I think if m women had to put up with the shock of prostate exams, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> well, women they'd do. never women talk do. about. Well, you know what? This I don't no, think because, this, because this after a certain compares. age, I know after a certain age. Women do have to put up with the shock of a prostate exam because what is the prostate exam? It's a finger up your ass, yeah. right? And what is an uh, an exam to, uh, I guess, do reconnaissance on possible anal polyps? Well, it's a, it's a up camera. Your ass. They didn't. They didn't... No, oh, no, well, it's a I finger guess, up your ass. I was gonna say I had a scope, so um, that's oh, well, that's no, you different. had a scope because okay, you had I think symptoms. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, but, I had a scope not, because of genetics, not, but we. I'm gonna, I'm gonna excuse okay, myself. Okay, but, but just regular screening, women in middle age often take the finger as well. <laughs> there okay. we go. 
Women okay, get the so finger too. You're not. You're not going to say. Yeah, see, I didn't know that, that because of yes, my my family situation. The they don't. Yeah, they don't no. do that when you have uh, several family members of your gender that died. Of no, they give you a scope. The age of 50. Or or no, they um, don't. They don't do that in the United States, right? Yeah. Because in the United States, the insurance covers the the colonoscopy. Be, well, they might right? actually, they there might do in... it for regular, or, you know, women who don't have that family history. I just don't know because I have that family history. Yeah. So they, I've they, never been. They might do that for women who don't have that family history, but you just want to just kind of, you know, Turn do a little and... exploration and make sure that there's no, nothing to be concerned about up there. Right. And it's the same thing with pelvic exams, Right. <laughs> You know, like, you don't just get a pap smear. You get his fingers up your junk, and he's pressing up against all of the things inside, and he's, like, feeling your cervix. And, yeah, we're not going to have know, a long conversation long about that, because it's 10 o'clock, yeah. and I have to leave in an hour, but what and we I, have what an after show is, to do. What I'm saying is, there's nothing special about a man getting a finger up his bum at the doctor's office. That's fine. You can say yeah. that in, in one sentence. <laughs> just say it. And there we go. Um, where are we? Uh, Darth Sonic, yeah, Dark Sonic, Darth Sonic gave us nine ninety nine and said, on face slapping, that depends on how, uh, of how we're defining a limited to a certain genre. Uh, while some level of subdom is always present, it's by no means restricted to hard. No, no, no. If you took that out of subdom, it would not be acceptable to po portray a woman being slapped in the face in porn. I watch enough of it. There is no, you know, the, of of regular porn, that 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 there is no acceptability. I can I can tell you, there's not enough uh, uh, acceptability of of that outside of subdom, uh, where where they would just portray that. There, it's specialized. Like the only place I've ever ever seen that is where I've stumbled into subdom, uh, and I just usually stumble my way right back out because it's not really my thing. <laughs> Not that it's not okay for it to be other people's thing. It's just not mine. Um, Ray Patterson donated or gave us two dollars and said, "C Y T best rape jokes on the internet." Diana Davison. That sounds like fun to watch. I could see her going down a list of a bunch of rape jokes. Um, Albert Nader Retro gave us five dollars and said, "As a bonus, special groping privileges for honey badgers who show up at the club." <laughs> <laughs> French honey badger gave us that. See that? Okay. I wouldn't even grope you. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, there we go. Uh, French honey badger gave us five dollars and said, "I was withdrawing money at an ATM the other day, and an old lady asked me to check her balance. So, balance, so I pushed her." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Horrible. People. <laughs> uh. Paris in gave us uh, Paris in gave us uh, five dollars and said wrote a twelve page research paper on the men's rights movement for my final before graduating college in December and got an A. Keep doing what you do. Nice. Thank you. I would be interested in that actually. Um, yeah. If you if you happen to be on Twitter, because um, that's like the p best place to contact me. Um, I'm at, it's O-N-E-I-O-R-O-S-G-R-I-P, at Onerosgrip. There's a story behind that that I'm not going to get into because it's after I, 10 o'clock. I'm going to ask, but now's yeah, not the time. Yeah, <laughs> other, some other time. Um, or leave a comment here on this video. I will come back and check this video for comments uh, and, and uh, let me know another way. Um, or ask for another way to contact contact me because I would be interested in if if you're willing to give access to that paper I would be really interested in reading it. Um, Sierra De Flora gave us ten dollars and said my three year old nephew freaks out when he gets his diaper changed. I wonder if it has to do with being circumcised. I want to talk to my mom, his main Ooh. caretaker, about it. That's possible, but honestly, a lot of kids, a lot of little kids do that because the diaper is warm and then it gets wet and the, the liquid is warm, but their skin is wet from the wet liquid, even though it's in a diaper. And then you take the diaper off and the air hits the wet skin 
and it's uncomfortable. And some kids dislike having that happen more than others, and some of them get very upset about it. Um, and probably one of the first silly little kid behaviors I laughed at was one of my friend's younger brother um, learned to, to speak articulately before he was out of, out of diapers. And uh, I, was, I was in uh, the living room of their house with her, and his mom was in the next room changing the kid's diaper. And, uh, and, and he mimicked the way mom would, uh, would scold him. And he goes, no, no, you don't take the diaper off. No, you don't put the powder on. No. <laughs> and, and she's like, you, you, you can't really. <laughs> he didn't like the having his diaper changed. He didn't like having any of the aspects of it done. But then afterwards, he was like, <sighs> um, but because he was dry and, and warm again. Yeah. And it's just they don't like going through that you know don't 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 the clean me don't isn't, don't isn't this is inconvenient yeah. and I, I had to yeah. stop what I was doing and I'm cold and that's wet and this feels weird and cut it out you know and and yeah so it 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 may have nothing to do with the circumcision now if he was circumcised and he's he's like recently circumcised um that's a different story it might hurt and, uh, you know, to have the diaper changed because uh, circumcision itself is going to hurt. But in any case, um, yeah, I would, well, I would say the, it's probably more circum just discomfort. The circumcision, the circumcision wound, well, okay, no, I wouldn't say it's for discomfort uh, about that kind of stuff. No, I would about say the diaper, this... just physical discomfort, being cold and wet and, and yeah, having yeah, to stop but, what you're doing. But if he's circumcised, but... it might make that worse, too. Yeah, and also uh, that just having just the 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 association of having somebody circumcised, having somebody uh, inflict pain, like because my daughter <coughs> did not used to object to diaper changes until the one time I accidentally poked her with a pin, and then after that she did. Then after that she was just like, "Yeah, no, I object." All available grounds. Uh, any grounds, like, can we have a judge adjudicate this? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I object, object strenuously, strenuously, physically object to this. Um, like, but she, mm -hmm. she never had that problem until after I accidentally freaking. It's like, mom, you're lucky I'm a baby or I'd get up off this table and kill you right now. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, she yeah. would have. Yeah, she, she um, was like the, like the yeah. scream. Yeah. Horrific. Like that's that's the one thing that I'm like, oh, and and at the, my child, right? At the at the same time, like we mothers don't even give a second thought as to what circumcision really is. Yeah, yeah. a lot of moms right. don't. Exactly. No, and and like when I asked my daughter with a pin, I felt guilty over that. I Just that tiny little, yeah. That. yeah. Right, and it's it's like it was it was essentially um, it wasn't just a tiny little poke, it was a you know like you're trying to scoop several layers of diaper in there, and I scooped a few layers of her skin in there. Oh, geez, no wonder she was yeah. unhappy. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and so it was it was like it was a significant thing. It wasn't just a poke. It wasn't just like getting a shot at the doctor. Right, a, like a nice sharp needle going in and then coming out. It was, it was like a, you know, it was a wound, and you know, it was an accident, um, and uh, and that colored her. Well, her, yeah, her, and I, I know kids that objected to. Diapers. I know kids that so. objected to going to doc to the doctor for years because the first time they remembered going was getting their vaccines. Um, I oh, got, yeah. I got allergy shots every week from the time I was like the, maybe two weeks past my, uh, or maybe a month past my, my first really serious asthma attack, which was my first near death experience. Um, but, uh, so I got stuck, stuck in the arm with a needle every week from well, the time I, think... I was 18 months old until the time I was, uh, uh, 20 and I hate hate going to the doctor 
my doctor's a great guy. The doctor I have yeah. now, fabulous. I love talking to him. He's a great guy. Once I get there and I'm in there and I'm talking to the doctor, it's all fine. Yeah. But I hate going to the doctor. And I, yeah. I always wondered if it was because, like, my first first experience with going to the doctor's office on a regular basis, a lot of well baby visits, you know, the doctor picks the baby up and plays with the baby to to gauge reactions and all, you know, cutesy stuff, puts the baby on scale, gives the baby back to mom, has a conversation with mom, and there's there's no needle sticking or anything. like. I got stuck with needles so much when I was a kid. Um, yeah. I, like, I, I joked that I was a human pincushion. And, oh, it's uh, and like, I just it's... absolutely hate going to the doctor. Oh, it's like it's like my man, right? Like, so I'm sure he the probably has he... the same thing. Yeah, well, and from the time that my man was, he was you keep cutting disease, out, right? And and he uh, he essentially he's been to like I don't know sixty seventy five doctors, right? Trying to figure out this mystery disease that he had and non-university educated wife had to diagnose it for him um and so he's just like so he just went into the doctor recently and uh and the doctor says do you have any health serious health problems and he's like oh yeah no no not even close i mean it's not like i've been to like dozens and dozens of specialists who all just told me have you tried putting cream on it right and then my yeah. wife who's not even a university graduate had to freaking tell them what was going on with me right so like you know i don't know i'm just like no i just don't enjoy doctor visits it's i yep. have no idea why that is yep yeah. exactly yeah so yeah just it, it may be it, it may be that uh that's you know that's a factor in it it may be there's that... an association so if he's there's been like that, it may with... be that if he's been like but that about getting like, his diaper with... changed the whole time he's been a baby, or if you know he's been recently circumcised. Either way, it may be that there's an association with the pain from the circumcision. Yeah, uh, the real celebrate. Be messing with me yeah. down there. Yeah. The the real cel. Uh, oh, it's celerate. Celerate. And the real celerate gave us five dollars, and uh, says I have nothing to say, just trying to help. So thank you very much, and I hope I didn't butcher your name. Um, I don't know if that's a name name or if that's a word, but, uh, that's not a name, but I'm going to look that up now just to see, not right this minute, but later. Catherine Scully gave us $5 and said, I know a few rape jokes, but they all sound forced. <laughs> you are my friend. <laughs> Hello, punster. <laughs> Alex Ligas gave us $5 and said, help me fund my ninth project for uh, books for boys. Go to Facebook slash scholarships for men. So uh, to repeat that, that is Facebook slash scholarships for men. Uh, Darth Sonic gave us nine ninety nine and said, you just misrepresented me, presumably by accident. I know it's only in subdom stuff. I was, no, well, it's just the way that the tweet read. Um, I was saying it wasn't restricted to just the most hardcore of it. You didn't even fully read my chat. Well, I thought I had read the whole thing, but uh, let me go back and see. Okay, while some level of subdom is always present, it's by no means limited to hardcore chains and whips BDSM stuff. Yeah, that's still limiting it to a certain genre, though. Like, on the face slapping, that depends on how we're defining limited to a certain genre. Subdom is a genre. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then that's, like, what you were responding to was me saying... Okay, I'm now live here, Allison. Okay. So... You'll have to go and see what you're seeing. Listed in Honey Badger, the thing. Limited to a genre, it's not acceptable outside of subdom. There's face slapping uh, in in subdom, and in certain areas of subdom, it's really acceptable. But when you get outside of subdom, it's not. Um, subdom is a genre. So, uh, that's our last super chat. And it is, <laughs> this is, this is one of the longest sausages we've done in a while. And I'm pretty sure part of it's going to have to get cut off for our new, 
uh, streaming system. So it's time to end the show. Uh, so I will thank all of the Badgers for sticking out the long sausage f- with me. Thank all of the long or all of the listeners for sticking out the long sausage with me, and everybody who helps to uh, make HBR talk happen in the background. And a lot of hard work goes into that. And good night, all. Do Sky roll. Yeah, I purchased it. And we can also do it any other day to test this out. And when I know for sure it's working under many conditions, then whenever we're going to do it, we can just do a daily one for nine bucks. It's just that all, all this month, um, or the, the month coming up, is going to be rallies and shit going on. So. Thank <laughs> you.